Fans, please welcome back to Hibbert Stadium the Bearcats Battery Cannon Crew. They bring the bang back to Bearcats football. Please be aware we're walking in the south section of the concourse during the game today. Yeah, they've reloaded and they've got a good running back in Calvin, I'm sorry, in Rodriguez Clark. And then at wide receiver, they've got a good one as well, Calvin Austin the third. We'll get into those guys in a little bit more depth when we talk about the teams. Check in on a key member of the starting lineup. It's delivered by your hometown Domino's. Now hiring. Order now online at Domino's.com or use your Domino's account. Timeout reporter, former Bearcats quarterback Tony Pike. Thanks, Dan. I want to stick on the offensive side of the ball because I don't know how an opposing offense would attack this Bearcats defense. What I do know is what you guys just talked about. This Memphis defense is susceptible to the deep ball, and now they have the choice to make coming in. Do they commit more guys to the running game, which UC does so effectively, which would essentially make their biggest weakness magnified? So I'm looking at a guy today in Alex Pierce. He's been the deep threat. They've had the, the best chemistry between him and Des Ritter. If Alex Pierce can get down the field and take the top off the defense, it's only going to help the confidence of Des. 
edge runner, and obviously the running game for the Bearcats. And Alec Pierce is certainly capable of that. Average more than 17 yards a catch last year. Played for the first time this year last week after having a knee injury in training camp and had three catches in the win over SMU. It is a beautiful day for football here in Cincinnati. 45 degrees, the temperature rising. Bright sunshine pouring into Nippert Stadium. No chance of rain and minimal wind as the Bearcats, ranked seventh in the country, take on the Memphis Tigers. Smoke. Dan, thanks so much. First of three consecutive home games for the Bearcats, starting with a matchup today against Memphis. Still ahead, Dan will chat with Bearcats head coach Luke Fickle. We'll learn more about the Memphis Tigers and their first-year head coach Ryan Silverfield, and we'll chat with one of the many defensive stars from last week's win over SMU, defensive end MyJ Sanders. All of that still ahead. We are coming up on 22 minutes away from kickoff. It's Cincinnati and Memphis. You're listening to coverage of University of Cincinnati Bearcats football presented by RNL Carriers on 700 WLW. It made things easier for us as in plan. 
Marcus Freeman has has talked often about, look, we're not going to go too crazy with scheme. We want things to be simple. We want guys to just go out there and play. What do you like most about playing in his system? That it's okay to make mistakes. Or if you make a mistake, make sure you make the mistake like it. Um, 100%. You can be con- and it's and it's mainly like just being comfortable. It's okay messing up. You'll just fix it. You just have to fix your mistake. When did you achieve that comfort level that you just referenced? All, during the off season, like in camp, during camp times when it's most important to know the defense and know what you're doing around the defense and what what can and can not you do. That's when I had learned like learned like my role and. Not even, not even say my role. I know my role. Uh, more like, more like what I can and cannot do, and what hurts and helps the defense. So dive into that for me. Give us an idea of what you feel more comfortable doing this year, as opposed to your first two seasons. I feel more comfortable as in like a leader standpoint. Asking coach, can we do a certain thing, or suggesting to the coach of what we should run, or like asking Coach Freeman saying like, say if I'm in, say if I'm inside the game and we inside. Um, and he's on the sideline, and he's giving us a signal. Or sometimes we're waiting on their personnel, what they're going to give us. I can look on the sideline, and I can do like a play or a, um, a adjustment that I that I think that'll work, and then he'll be okay calling that play, things that's like that. That's a junior defensive end who's off to a great start so far here in 2020. Three and a half sacks for Maje Sanders. We are coming up on 15 minutes away from kickoff. 15 minutes to kickoff is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Beautiful day for football here at Nippert Stadium. It's seventh-ranked Cincinnati against Memphis. When we return, Dan will chat with the coach of the Bearcats, Luke Fickle. You're listening to coverage of University of Cincinnati Bearcats football on 700 WLW.
This afternoon, it's a rematch of the American Athletic Conference Championship game as the Bearcats host the Memphis Tigers. Coach, for the second straight week, you face one of the highest scoring teams in the country, in Memphis's case, roughly 39 points a game. Last week, you held an SMU team averaging 43 to 13. What stands out when you pop on the tape of your defense right now? Uh, I'd say the relentless play, and that's from all three levels of the defense. There's still mistakes being made. There's, there's nothing that's perfect, but they've done a great job, and Coach Freeman and those guys have done a great job of making sure those guys understand that effort overcomes a lot of things, and, and mistakes being one of them. And I think more than anything, um, there's a lot of things they've done really well, but I think the effort and the attitude is by far the best thing that's going on in that Black Cat defense reference to coach Freeman your defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman he got a well-deserved bunch of TV time during that game against SMU and he's obviously doing a fantastic job you were his position coach at Ohio State you've known him since he was a teenager what makes Marcus Freeman one of the best young coaches in college football I think he had a good coach in college that really kind of <laughs> it's it's a combination I mean when I try to say what makes great coaches it's probably a lot of things that make great fathers and, and great husbands. But I think the balance, the, the ability to have all phases, um, he's the whole package. And, and I don't just mean that as a coach, but I mean that as a recruiter. I mean that as a motivator. I mean that as a mentor. Um, and then you throw the family into the mix that, that you know, take it to the next level because of recruiting and things like that. And uh, Obviously, I tried to talk him out of getting into this profession, and when I knew I couldn't talk him out of Desmond Ray. Rushing yards last. But, but you know, you, you got to kind of see what they're giving you. Um, I think that a few of those were, were scrambles that, um, you know, maybe he's learned from in the first couple weeks of, of understanding you got to take what they give you and still use some of the assets that you have. And your legs are a really good asset for us. Um, but it also was with some of the things, you know, they're going to drop out of there and play some Tampa 2 um, and really take away some of those things we want to do down the field. Um, we had to be you know, willing to, to let Dez run on a, on a few of those QB draws. And, um, and then late in the game, I think just with the uh, over-aggression uh, of trying to stop Jared Dokes, uh, that's where you see a, a really mature quarterback, even out of the going end zone, realize what the situation is and what it is that the defense is doing and taking what they're giving us. Happened to turn into a 91 yard touchdown. Last week, you faced the active career leader in passing yards in college football in SMU, Shane Bouchelle. He's thrown for more than 10,400 yards in his college career. This week, Memphis quarterback Brady White, number four on that list. He's just under 9,000 career yards. How is this week's challenge in defending the pass different from last week's challenge? Well, I think Bouchelle was, was different in the sense that he was much more of a deep ball, and I'm not saying Brady White doesn't throw the deep ball. The thing that Brady White does better than probably anybody I've played against is the RPO throws. And sometimes in the RPO throws just means that you're riding the fake. You're not going to get set up. You're not going to be in perfect mechanics with all the things that you need to do to deliver the ball. Uh, but he can really you know, kind of deliver the ball from any different angle. Um, he can deliver it with his feet going one direction because of a run fake uh, and still put it on the money. Even though he switched with receivers in the last couple of years, being you know, obviously due to graduation and, and some other situations, uh, he hasn't missed a beat with those guys. And sometimes you wonder and you ask yourself, how is he doing with his feet pointed in different directions? But he's got an uncanny ability to not just read what's going on in the coverage, but then be able to deliver the ball uh, to space where well receivers are. Coach, best of luck. It's Cincinnati versus Memphis. Our pregame coverage will continue in just a moment here on News Radio 700, <coughs> WLW. If you want to get your
consecutive win to open up the season. Welcome back to Nippert Stadium. Just a little bit more than six minutes away from kickoff. It's Cincinnati taking on Memphis. The Bearcats trying to extend their season opening winning streak to five while at the same time trying to end what's been a five game losing streak to the Tigers. Obviously the two losses last season. The Bearcats have not beaten Memphis since almost exactly seven years ago, October 30th, 2013 a 34 to 21 win at the Liberty Bowl. When we return, Dan, Jim, and Tony have the call. It's the Bearcats and the Tigers. You're listening to coverage of University of Cincinnati Bearcats football presented by RNL Carriers on 700 WLW. Brought to you by State Farm Insurance. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is One, there. Two. Your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com for all Toyota offers. Toyota, let's go places. Skyline break, Chili. No break. Feeling good? Think, no break. Skyline. for the pigskin to fly under brilliant sunshine at historic Nippert Stadium as the undefeated and seventh ranked UC Bearcats host the defending champions of the American Athletic Conference, the Memphis Tigers. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Dan Hort alongside former Bearcats standout Jim Kelly Jr. And it's great to have you with us for our coverage of Bearcats football. Let's get to Kelly's keys to the game. They're brought to you by AE Door and Window Company where they sell the best and service the rest. Well, Dan, first and foremost, and I think I was watching the coin toss just as we started here, and I believe the Bearcats are going to get the football first. Looks like Memphis won and deferred, and that was my number one key. Whether you're on defense or offense, get off to a quick start. We all know Memphis can score, but I think the Bearcats can make them press them a little bit and make them press, and uh, that this good defense will be able to take care of that. And on offense, what does Memphis have? 
Well, Brady White, he was there last year. He's there this year. They lost Antonio Gibson, DeMonte Coxie this year. Kenneth Gainwell opted out this year, but they've got guys in that I talked about at the outset who can fill in for those guys. Calvin Austin the third. He has uh, 24 catches on the year, 424 yards and five touchdowns. They have a tight end, Sean Dykes, with 23 catches. You heard what Luke Fickle said. They run the RPO, and that means a lot of short passes. But Bearcat defense, which is so good, you're not going to stop those completions. But if you tackle, they just pick up three, four, five yards. So tackle. On the offensive side, avoid the turnovers. In two games back-to-back -back last year, the regular season finale and the conference championship game, Ben Bryant in game one, Desmond Ritter in game two had some costly turnovers in two close football games. That was the difference in those two football games. And last but not least, be solid on special teams because Memphis is very solid. Riley Patterson's number two in the career kicking um, at, at Memphis. He's got a streak going that's very, very good. They've got another, they've got a, Bearcats have a great punter in James Smith. Adam Williams at uh, Memphis's punter is very good as well. So just be solid in the solid team. All right, let's toss it down now to our sideline reporter, Tony Pike. Look, let's not overcomplicate things today. On paper, this Bearcat defense is elite. The Bearcat offense can move the ball against Memphis. The outline factor, two wins versus the Bearcats last year is what Memphis had. That's great for motivation. That's great during the week. It has to stop now because if you play outside of yourself and you got revenge or you're overhyped, then you miss a lane, then you miss an assignment, and you give up a big play. Everything goes to rest now. Play your game, and the Bearcats will be fine today. Luke Fickle says it's about redemption, yep. not revenge. He never uses that revenge word. Riley Patterson approaching the ball and ready to kick it off from the 35-yard line, and this game is underway. Tucker settling under it. He has a kickoff return for a score this year, but he will down it about one yard deep in the end zone, and the Bearcat offense will begin from the 25-yard line. Well, I thought Tucker was going to run that one out. We've talked about last week and the week before. Of course, he had a touchdown on a kickoff return before, and he's pretty much been given the green light and only one yard deep. I thought he'd take that one out. I think it was a good job there of kind of using the, using using his brain there and keeping that one in the end zone. The Bearcats could have a pretty good drive start at the 25. And the Bearcats will open the game with double tight ends on the field. Josh Wiley on the left side. And Leonard Taylor on the right side. Desmond Ritter under center after rushing for a career high 179 yards last week against SMU. He fakes a handoff to Dokes, wants to throw it deep. He's going to fire down the middle, uh, down the left sideline rather, and it is incomplete for Josh Wiley at the 40 yard line of Memphis. Yeah, it went deep all the way that time, three verticals. I talked about Josh Wiley, Mike Young on the right side. And uh, Alec Pierce down the left side, he kind of made a post move, came into the middle, nobody open. Bearcats last week passed the ball the first eight plays. Wiley exits, Jay Sean Jackson enters, two receivers out to the right, one out to the left on second and 10. Ritter looks to throw again, has to scramble to the right, now he's going to look to run. And he goes into a feet first slide after a three yard scramble. Third down and seven coming up. Yeah, definitely had a great game last week running the football at SMU. And right away, pressure got in there. However, taken care of by the offensive line, Ritter stepped up and went out to the right side and decided he would try to take it down the field, but not much there and took a slide. Memphis has an excellent interior pass rusher and nose tackle O'Brien Goodson. He has four sacks this year. Ritter in the shotgun, third down and seven. Three receivers left, one right. The receiver out to the right is Alec Pierce. Ritter drops back to throw, in trouble, and sacked back at the 21-yard line. So. Memphis gets to him. It's Ducksworth, Wardalis Ducksworth, one of the defensive ends, coming up with his third sack of the year. Yeah, not the fast start that I had talked about. And uh, Bearcats took a shot. I like the fact that they went down the field right off the bat. Memphis was ready for that. Ritter had no place to go. And uh, then uh, the little scramble by Ritter. And then, of course, that sack, that's not a good way to get started. So James Smith will punt after a three and out. The dangerous Calvin Austin waits back at the 33 to return. It's a rugby style punt. Austin backpedaling, settling under it, calls for a fair catch, loses the ball. It's on the turf. There's a scramble for it at the 33 yard line of Memphis. 
Bodies from both sides piling on top of the football. We'll see who wins the scrum. There's a penalty flag down, another penalty flag down. No indication yet as to who recovered the fumble. Yeah, I don't know who had it, but the penalties are for pulling people off the pile. Everybody, both sides were pulling people off. And uh, flags, three flags down there, and that's going to cost somebody. And Austin dropped the ball, and I think Austin got the ball back. Memphis did recover at the 33-yard line. Yeah, and he waited forever to make a fair catch signal, and he raised it at the last second, couldn't get his second arm down to make the catch. And um, he, did, he did recover the football, so he dropped the ball. A Bearcat jumped on it, it squirted out, and that's when Calvin Austin the third fell on the football. We'll see what the penalties are here. My guess is it's going to go against both teams. And that's a purely a guess. Really on the field is a muff recovered by the receiving team. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Receiving team number 19 for pulling a player off the pile. 15-yard penalty, first down Memphis. That is number 19's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Joshua Hastings, the guilty party, and so instead of having a decent drive start at the 33, Memphis will start from the 18-yard line. Yeah, that hurts Memphis. I, I thought I saw a Cincinnati guy in there pulling as well, but it might have been that same situation. So the Bearcats catch a little bit of a break there after a three and out on their first drive, and now we'll see a very, very potent offense in run by Brady White. In his sixth year in college, his third year at Memphis, he had three injury-filled years at Arizona State before transferring. He's been terrific the last couple of years. And 17 touchdown passes in the first four games this year. He hands it off to Rodriguez Clark, running a sweep to the right, and he's buried at the 20-yard line, close to the Memphis sideline, after a two-yard pickup. Yeah, Clark came in with 421 yards on the ground, and that being his 80th carry of the year, Averaged 5.3 coming into today's game. Gets only a two yards on that one. Memphis goes with a two-by-two two formation on second down and eight. The Tigers at their own 20 with no score early in the game. Looked like MyJ Sanders jumped. Brady White throws a short pass. It is caught short of the first down. Yeah, it's going to be third and three. Third and two make it, but if they take the penalty, it'll remain second down. And... Sanders definitely jumped. He had a couple of those last week at SMU as well. I think you take five yards yeah, and get, and get the, the extra set. down Correct. instead of six yards and third down. Upside, defense number 21. Five-yard penalty, second down. Exactly. Okay. So second you down. You can turn it off. Second down and three <laughs> after the five-yard penalty on my Jay Sanders. Yeah, you lose a yard on that transaction, but it's only second down versus third down. One deep safety for the Bearcats. Derek Forrest on second and three. Brady White hand, uh, hands it off, and Rodriguez Clark is stopped for a loss at the 24-yard line. He tried to charge straight up the middle, and the Bearcats got a great push up front and tackled him for a one-yard loss. Yep, this is where the Bearcats are going to get challenged. This will be the RPO, a little short pass. This is kind of just like a run for Memphis. They do it. Very, very often. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Cincinnati shifting up front defensively. Brady White with a short drop, cocks the arm, throws. It's caught, but Dykes short. is short of the first down. He's run out of bounds, one yard short. And on fourth and one, deep in their own territory, you would think this early in the game that Memphis would punt. Punt team is not out there yet, but here they come. Yeah, actually, um, in this particular case, Dykes had the line to gain but he came back to the football. Not that that's a bad thing, particularly when you're covered very tightly. You want to come back to the football. I'm sure he thought, I can get that last yard when I turn up the field. Wasn't the case. And nice job by the Cincinnati defense to force a three and out, even with a penalty in there. On fourth and one, they snap it back to Adam Williams. It's a line drive punt. Ryan Montgomery calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 25-yard line. It had good distance, even though it didn't have great hang time. A 48-yard punt, and Cincinnati takes over at the 25. We'll take a timeout, 11.33 left in the first quarter. We are scoreless at Nippert Stadium, and you're listening to Bearcat Football, presented by r &L Carriers here on News Radio 700 WLW.
Scoreless about three and a half minutes into the game here at Nippert Stadium. This week's U.S. Bank Scholar Athlete of the Week is Murat Sogdalev of the Cincinnati Swimming and Diving Team. Murat is studying information technology and cybersecurity and has a perfect 4.0 GPA. He's currently working toward his second bachelor's degree. Congratulations, Murat, our Cincinnati Bearcats Scholar Athlete of the Week, brought to you by U.S. Bank. So these two Outstanding teams begin the game with three and outs. On yeah, yeah, exactly. So kind of feeling each other out. Cincinnati saw an opportunity to try to go up top, and that ball overthrown and didn't gain anything much after that. And of course, the sack, Ritter had three yards, but then seven-yard sack, he's got minus four. And we saw from that Memphis going to put some pressure on Ritter, sending not just the three guys or four guys that they've got up front. They sent two backers on that. They're going to mix it up. We've seen that happen already this year. Cincinnati's done a good job of picking it up. On the other side, the Bearcat defense played stingy defense in Memphis, of course, with a three and out, even with an offside penalty. First and 10 Bearcats from their own 25-yard line. Ball on the right hash. Pistol formation. Desmond Ritter claps his hands, fakes a handoff, throws to the far sideline. The catch made by Young, and Michael turns it upfield to the 31 for a five-yard gain. Boy, that's a tough throw. Right hash mark all the way out to the numbers on the left side. And good throw by Ritter. Young did a good job of coming back to the football. Turned back inside and got what he could. Picks up solid six on first down. You better put something on that throw. Yes, because sir. Because if you don't, yes, sir. those are the ones that become pick sixes. Second and five Bearcats from their own 31. Scoreless four minutes into the game. Des Ritter, empty backfield, back to throw. Pockets good, short throw. Bobbled, then caught by Jay Sean Jackson. He has a first down and a six-yard pickup at the 36. Yep, he was actually on his way down, a little bit of low throw. He did bobble it, but he was right there and got the first down. So the initial first down of the day for the Bearcats. Back-to-back -back completions for Desmond Ritter. First and 10 Cincinnati at the 36-yard line. 10-39 left in a scoreless first quarter. Three receivers stretch out in a straight line to the left. Alec Pierce out to the right. Running back to the right of Desmond Ritter is Jared Dokes. Alec Des Pierce appears to be himself. changing the play. Play clock winding down to five, four. Renfro snaps it back to Ritter. He fires over the middle. It is incomplete. Well, should have Tried been completed. Tried to cut a fastball to one of his tight ends, Leonard Taylor, and Leonard did not hold on. Yeah, he was the inside guy on a double slant. It was the right read, and Memphis showed that um, they had missed initially Alec Pierce, and then not only did they bring a guy over to cover Pierce, they shifted a safety over from the, from the defensive left side to Cincinnati right side, and that freed up that back side and to the wide side of the field. Leonard Taylor out, Josh Wiley in. He's one of three receivers out to the left. Ball's in the middle of the field, second and 10 Cincinnati from the 36-yard line. Scoreless about five minutes into the game. Alec Pierce looks toward the sideline, now motions closer to the formation. Desmond Ritter looks to throw, passes for Pierce, catches it, sprints upfield, picks up the first down, and gets tackled at the 47, an 11-yard game. Yeah, made the, made the adjustment in the alignment. Great job by Ritter and Pierce. And nice job by Alec of putting that second hand over the football as he went into four defenders. And believe me, played Memphis four years in a row, and I, I can still feel the pain today of yeah. catching a slant route against these guys. Now the Bearcats go double running backs. This is unusual. Dokes to the left of Ritter, Montgomery to the right of Ritter as he waits for a shotgun snap. Now Montgomery goes in jet motion. They throw it to him, gets a block, crosses the 50, and he's close to a first down as he is tackled at the Memphis 43. Great Looks fly. like a 10-yard gain and a first down, and there's a penalty flag down at the very end of that play. Jay Sean Jackson and Michael Young with two outstanding blocks over there. We'll see if maybe the penalty involved one of those two. Um, but they did a great job of clearing the way for Ryan Montgomery. Let's see what the call is. They pick up the okay. flag. Yeah, I think hard to hear him there, but I think what he was saying it was um, offensive pass interference call because there was blocking, but it all took place behind the line of scrimmage, as did the pass. So great job of blocking out there by Jay Sean Jackson and Michael Young. Double tight ends for Cincinnati, first and 10 at the Memphis 43. Trey Tucker goes in motion, empty backfield. Desmond Ritter back to throw again. He's going to launch a deep ball for Alec Pierce. Pulls down the football with both hands for a Bearcats touchdown. What a catch. 
by Alec Pierce. We're going to talk about it. This guy on the side rolling down at the one yard line. Nope, they've given it to him. So, okay, my bad. Saw the official from this side ran in and was trying to down the ball at the one. He was overridden by the guy on the other side and the guy in the end zone, so well done. What a catch by Alec Pierce. It sure was. Leaping into the air, falling over backward, plucked it down with his fingertips. A 43-yard score, and Cincinnati's on the scoreboard first. And they just did look at it, and they're giving him the okay. And what an outstanding catch by Alec Pierce. Number one is speed to get open. It was a little bit underthrown. Not going to be critical of the throw because it was there, but Alec Pierce went up and high pointed it for the touchdown. Here comes the PAT from Cole Smith. He blasts it through, and Cincinnati has taken a 7 0 lead. Break. We'll take a timeout with 9.15 left in the first quarter here at Nippert Stadium. 7 0 Bearcats. This is Bearcat Football presented by RL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. Tony Fike, Mo Egger, and Ben Jarvis, Brad Ellis, our stat man back at Nippert Stadium, 7-0 Cincinnati after a 43-yard touchdown pass from Desmond Ritter to Alec Pierce. We said on the pregame show, it's a Memphis team that's giving up more than 400 passing yards per game. This could be a day for the Bearcat defense to really attack through the air. Well, on that six-play, 75-yard touchdown drive, all six plays were passes. Five were completions. The only incompletion was a drop by Leonard Taylor. And then the big play, the touchdown pass to Alec Pierce, put Cincinnati on the scoreboard. Yeah, and if you look at the Taylor slant and the Alec Pierce slant that got 11 yards, there was, they, I mean, I, meant, I made the comment that four guys hit Alec Pierce. Well, they did, but it wasn't like Desmond Ritter was throwing into like a doorknob. I mean, there was a pretty wide window there for him to get that ball through. And yes, Memphis converged quickly on Pierce, but um, there's some space out there to throw the football. Cole Smith ready to kick it off. Taj Washington, the returner for Memphis. Memphis had three kickoff return touchdowns last year, including one against Cincinnati. That was Chris, Chris Claybrooks, who's no longer on the roster. This kickoff will be fielded by Javon Ivory. Runs from the 10, trying to run across the field, slowed down around the 18, and then he stumbles forward past the 20 and goes down at the 23-yard line. Yeah, good coverage, but nice little run back there, breaking a the tackle, but Bearcats uh, come out with decent defensive field position. Memphis from the 18 for, I believe, the second time Memphis will start from the 18. After the uh, punt and the penalty. 
Make it to 23 with the forward progress. I'm sorry, progress my bad. Stumble. My bad, yep, yep. 7-0 Cincinnati, 9-10 left first quarter here at Nippert. As the Bearcats try to beat a team, they lost to twice in an eight-day span. Last year at the Liberty Bowl, final game of the regular season and then the American Athletic Conference championship game. Brady White in a pistol formation, claps his hands a couple of times, catches a high snap, it's a handoff up the gut, and Joel DeBlanco will make the tackle at the 26. After a three yard run for sophomore Rodriguez Clark. Nice job by DeBlanco, the Bearcats, three, three down linemen, linebackers, Jarrell White backed off a little bit. Here we go. Memphis goes hurry up and hands it off again. And this time, my Jay Sanders is all over Rodriguez Clark. He tackles him for no gain at the 26-yard line. Yeah, really close to being a tackle for a loss. Sanders tried to pull him backwards and wasn't able to do that. And Clark leaves the game. Rodriguez Weaver checks in at running back. He's a threat to catch a pass out of the backfield. Two receivers right. One left, My J. Sanders is offside again. Brady White with a free play throws it out of bounds. Yep, My J. Sanders gets off quick. But again, that's that's hurting the Bearcats. Yeah. Happened. Offside, defense number 21. Five yard penalty, remains third down. Happened. Had to watch the ball. Yeah, exactly, and the Bearcats were able to overcome that on the last three and out or the last series, wasn't the three and out because of the penalty. But Sanders had a couple of those at SMU last last week as well. And this is an offense you don't want to give second chances to. Having them on a third and long is a really nice situation. Now it's third and two, gets a lot tougher. We've talked about it, Jim, with a lack of fans, the clapping, the hard counts, they are much more effective than they normally would be with big crowds. Brady White's going to try to scramble for the first down, running toward the Bearcats sideline. He trots out of bounds with a first down at the 35 yard line. Yep. As Memphis converts on third and two. He had Austin over there, and even as he passed the line of scrimmage, he faked like he was throwing the ball, and that kept the Bearcat defenders back a little bit, allow him to make the 35-yard line and pick up the first down. He's not a big runner. He's averaging about three and a half yards per run for sacks count in college football. On first and 10, he gives it off to Rodriguez Clark, who does not get back to the line of scrimmage, trying to run behind right tackle, and he's brought down for a two-yard loss. I think that was Sanders again, but it, and it was, who, he'll get the, the tackle for loss there, but give an assist to Jarrell White. He was the first guy back there, and that made Rodriguez Clark go wider, which allowed Sanders to make the tackle for a loss. Loss of two. Second down and 12 for the Memphis Tigers, 7-0 Cincinnati, midway through the first quarter here at Nippert Stadium. Cincinnati showing blitz. Brady White back to throw. It's only a three-man rush. His pass over the middle is incomplete, and he threw it into traffic. Darian Beavers might have got his right hand on the ball on a throw intended for slot receiver Javon Ivory. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I don't know if the ball was a little bit behind Ivory. He certainly wasn't ready for that hot throw. That went right through his hands. And you're right, it might have been tipped. Nonetheless, incomplete. Third down and 12. We'll see if the Bearcats put some heat on White. They bring a blitz. White's under pressure. Little uh, forward flip pass that's incomplete. Just tried to shovel it forward to Taj White, or Taj Washington, rather with the pass rush closing in, and Memphis will have to punt it away. Yeah, White did a good job. Brady White, the quarterback, did a great job of getting out of that pocket. Solly wasn't going to make the first down on his own with a scramble and just kind of shoveled the ball out there and uh, way behind the receiver. So second punt of the first quarter for Adam Williams. His first one was 48 with no return. Ryan Washington, or Ryan Montgomery, rather, waiting back at the 25 for Cincinnati. Memphis does have a fake this year for a long run from the personal protector who's about 280 pounds. Here's a very poor punt, fielded at the 26. Montgomery is tackled by the gunner, though. Good play in punt coverage as he is brought down by Gabe Rogers after a one-yard return. Yeah. 41 yards on the punt. Cincinnati takes over at the 27-yard line as we go down to Tony Pike. It's, it's crazy when you think of what opposing defense are going to do. We saw the first series Memphis defense tried to apply pressure, inviting UC to throw the ball down the field. That last drive, that's exactly what they did. Not going to try to run into a loaded box. They're going to take the top off the defense. Now we see is Memphis going to try to make those adjustments or 
continue to put the pressure on Des Ritter. First and 10 Bearcats at their own 27. They lead 7-0 here in the first quarter. Ritter sends a receiver in jet motion and then fakes a handoff to Dokes, throws a contested catch that will go as a 10-yard gain for the Bearcats. Good coverage by Memphis, but the Cincinnati receiver came down to the ball. Yeah, it was well covered from the safety position. Wide open that time in reference to the little curl route. And Michael Young with a catch. Yeah, Quindell Johnson was the guy who came up, and he looked like he was launched out of a cannon. He knew exactly where that ball was going, but nice concentration by Mike Young make that catch and a first down. Ten-yard gain on first and ten. The Cats have it at their own 37-yard line. Ritter claps his hands. He'll look to pass again. Fires toward the near sideline. Young with a catch. Sprints up the near sideline. Picks up the first down and more. He's into Memphis territory and knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Savante Oliver knocks him out of bounds, but not before Michael Young does a great job of turning up the field after the short throw. And I got to tell you, you know, again, took the, took the boundary side there all by himself, two guys over there. He was wide open, wide Very open. Very soft coverage over there, and it turns out to be an 18-yard gain on Young's second consecutive catch. Cincinnati goes with an empty backfield and five wides at the Memphis 45-yard line. Three out to the wide side left, two out to the right. Everybody stretched out in a straight line. Ritter claps the hands, catches Jake Renfro's snap. He's going to throw it deep down the left sideline. It is overthrown and incomplete. Trying to launch one for true freshman, Jaden Thompson. Yeah, nice job. Just a little bit overthrown. That man coverage hit. there with the safety free. And um, right read by Ritter. Man, Thompson was open. He just threw, overthrew it a little bit. Thompson will come out. Young and Tucker go out to the left. Arkansas transfer Jordan James out to the right. Jordan Jones, I should say. Josh Wiley also in the game as a wing behind the right tackle. Now Wiley motions one way and comes back to the right. Desmond Ritter back to throw on second and 10. Bouncing in the pocket, he'll try to take off and run. And Memphis pulls him down by the right foot after a one-yard scramble. That was Ducksworth, the guy you talked about earlier in the game, Dan. He, he's got enough of uh, Des Ritter to knock him down there. Didn't really get an ankle tackle, just kind of hit him in the legs, knocked him off balance. He gets only one yard on the, on the scramble. So a third down and nine play coming up for Cincinnati. Clock running with 5.18 left in the first quarter, and the Bearcats leading 7-0. The Cats will go empty. Three receivers left, two out to the right, including Jared Dokes, who now motions into the backfield and lines up to the right of Desmond Ritter. The play clock is at 5. Dokes shifts to Ritter's left. Play clock at 2. Dez is ready, catches the snap, drops back to throw, throws a screen, caught by Dokes, and he's knocked down after a one-yard pickup. Good recognition by Memphis, and it's fourth down and eight. Well, James Smith will get a chance to uh, do his magic here, kicking from what would appear to be the 44-yard line. And a uh, nice read by Memphis of seeing Dokes slide out of the backfield. There was no way he was going to... Even if he breaks one tackle, he doesn't pick up the first down there. Got a tweet from his dad this morning showing off the cherry crop in Australia. Here comes the punt from James Smith. Fair catch signal given, and the catch is made inside the 10-yard line. It is fair caught at the 8. James Smith does it again. A perfectly placed 34-yard punt for his Bearcat career. That is his 82nd inside the 20-yard line. He's had two touchbacks. We'll take a timeout with 422 left in the first quarter. 7-0 Bearcats. This is Cincinnati football presented by RNL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW.
Cincinnati 7, Memphis nothing. Thanks for tuning in on this sunny Saturday afternoon in Cincinnati. We have 422 left here in the first quarter at Nippert Stadium. The Bearcats breaking out new red jerseys today with black patches on the shoulder. With the sea paw, they've got black pants on with red and white stripes. Shiny black helmets with the sea paw on either side. Memphis is one of these schools that has about 9,000 uniform combinations. Cincinnati has a bunch. Memphis has even more. They've come out today with white jerseys, silver pants, and silver helmets with a blue tiger on each side. Good, good looking uniforms today for both teams. Once again, it is a direct family only crowd at Nippert Stadium with the exception of the band socially distanced on the opposite side of the stadium. We've got the dance team and the cheerleaders as well. Memphis allowed to have direct family members. I counted 44 in the Memphis section. So a few folks making the trip up to Cincinnati to see if the Tigers can knock off. Opponent for the first time since 1996. Back in 96, Memphis stunned Tennessee when the Volunteers were ranked sixth in the country. Had a quarterback named Peyton Manning. Yep. Big in-state rivalry for them. the receiver to sneak through the pack and he's racing downfield for what looks like it's going to be a 92 yard score no penalty flags down as memphis gets a 92 yard touchdown on a short pass where the bearcats had players gathered around the receiver early in the route and could not get him down yeah just literally a little uh, quick screen out to the right couple of blocks out there very good blocks by the other wide receivers and man, off to the races, 92 yards. Taj Washington is the receiver, a red shirt freshman from Texas. He was averaging 15 yards per catch prior to that. And the average is about to get a lot better after yep. a 92 yard touchdown. Riley Patterson's extra point is up. It is good. We're tied at seven with 407 left in the first quarter. Yeah, again, just a little short pass. Not much there at all. Just good blocking down the field that allowed um, Washington to take it the distance and did a little track thing at the end there. Stuck his chest out and put his arms back like he was breaking the tape at the finish line right at the goal line. Well, nothing new for the Memphis Tigers. They have had a ton of big plays in the Brady White era. Saw it against Cincinnati last year, a 65 yard touchdown run the conference championship game by Antonio Gibson, who's now off to a great start in the NFL with a Washington football team. He had a 128-yard rushing game last week against the Dallas Cowboys and is the highest-graded rookie running back in the NFL, even graded higher than Clyde Edwards-Alaire, according to Pro Football Focus. Yeah, and it was <clears throat> one of the keys we had in the beginning was get off to a fast start. The Bearcats did that. Although 7-zip is certainly not safe with Memphis, they just proved that. In the first quarter, if you look at Memphis scoring by quarters, by far Memphis is weakest. So see what the Bearcat offense can do here. Here comes the kickoff to Trey Tucker, settles under it in the end zone, and then at the last second lets it fly over his shoulder for a touchback. So that certainly helps the stats for quarterback Brady White. Threw the ball sideways about one yard. He gets credit for a 92-yard touchdown, the 79th of his Memphis tenure. He is two behind Danny Wimprine's all-time school record for career touchdown passes. Yep, he um, more than likely will get that this year. That is 18th on uh, of this year, this being Memphis's fifth game. Bearcats have run 14 plays on offense. They have all been intended passes. Desmond Ritter has scrambled a couple of times and been sacked once. There hasn't been a normal running play yet. Desmond Ritter fakes a handoff. Here's a quarterback run on the zone read, and Des gets popped at the 34 after running for nine yards. Yeah, he got nine on it, did a great job there. Had the option of pitching it. It's a not, not only the read option, which he could handle the ball inside, it was uh, he could have pitched it outside as well. Good job by Ritter of picking up nine. Double tight ends in for Cincinnati, both lining up to the left. Leonard Taylor and Josh Wiley on second down and one. Seven, seven is the score. Three and a half minutes to go. First quarter, Nippert Stadium. 
Ritter sends a receiver in jet motion. That is Tucker. Now reverses back. They give it to him on a little forward pass. Tucker sprinting for the first down. Didn't get much, but they only needed a yard. And Tucker picked up about three. He did a little stutter out there. Looked like he was going to take the ball back up inside, but then stayed to the outside. Got what he needed for the first down. Like you said, Dan, he didn't get much, but he only needed one. Got two, I believe. Interesting that he sprinted past the quarterback in jet motion, then planted his foot and sprinted back the other way. First and 10 Cincinnati from the 36. Officially two yards there for Trey Tucker. Desmond Ritter under center. True freshman Jake Renfro starting at center for the second consecutive game. Ritter will hand it off. First true running play to a running back in this game. And Jared Dokes gets tackled after a four-yard run at the 40. Yep. Nice job. Again, uh, the Tucker run was more the jet sweep. So that being the first play right there where you hand the ball off to a running back. And you mentioned Renfro starting at center. Um, good job in there also by Dylan O'Quinn starting at guard for his second straight week. Renfro, a true freshman. O'Quinn, a third-year sophomore. Second and six Cincinnati after the four-yard run by Jared Dokes. Jay Sean Jackson goes in motion, lines up in the slot to the right. Ritter throws over the middle, caught on the run by Big Leonard Taylor, lowers the right shoulder, drives a safety into the turf, and gets tackled at the 35-yard line, a 25-yard connection. Yeah, Tyrez Lindsey was the guy, and boy, he saw Leonard Taylor coming at him. He was the defender, and he took a shot when Taylor dipped the shoulder. I don't think he's going to want to see that again. Here's a handoff to Jared Dokes, and he's ripped to the turf after a one-yard run. Tackled by defensive end Morris Joseph. Yeah, nice job there by Joseph. Kind of just hog-tying Jared Dokes and whipping him to the ground. Only a pickup of one. Leonard Two. Taylor comes off the field. He stayed in for one play after the 25-yard gain, and he looked a little woozy as he was coming to the sideline. He might have felt the effects of his hit as well. Second down and nine, Cincinnati. Ritter ready for a shotgun snap. Bearcats have a player on either side of him. Jerome Ford in the game for the first time. Ritter gives it to Dokes, trying to run right. Nothing there, tackled for no gain. In that formation there, Memphis brought people up into the box, suspecting run. They guessed right. No gain whatsoever there that time. Injured player down for Memphis. It's defensive end Joseph Dorcius, who was honorable mention all conference a year ago. He's the guy, we referenced him earlier, who lines up as the punt protector at 280 pounds, roughly. They snapped it to him for a 25-yard run. That would be a rumble, <laughs> a ramble. It was, it was amusing <laughs> to watch. That was in their opener against Arkansas State. Dorosius has been sitting up the entire time since the end of that play, and the training staff is taking a look. The Bearcats 0 for 2 so far on third downs, and this is a tough one here at third and nine. Although the passing game's been clicking, the intermediate kind of 8 to 10-yard routes which is what the Bearcats need on this one to keep this drive going. Looks like they're looking at the lower leg of defensive end Joseph Dorcius. Walk on who earned a scholarship and as I mentioned, played so well last year, he was honorable mention all league. He's on his feet and appears to be okay. Yeah. Walking on his own without a limp. He had a brother who also played for Memphis, wrapped up his career last year. Bearcats will send Michael Young and Jay Sean Jackson out to the left. Alec Pierce out to the right. Josh Wiley will also detach and go out to the left. So three receivers out to the wide side. Pierce isolated on the boundary side. Now Wiley motions out to the right. So a two by two formation on third and nine. Shotgun snap, four man rush. Ritter throws, caught by Wiley. He's out of bounds, short of the first down, three yards short. See if Cincinnati goes for it. Yeah, this is a tough one here. It'll be a long field goal, approximately uh, 46 yarders. So I guess just based on past history, this is where Luke Fickle goes for it. Desmond Ritter, 11 for 14 here in the first quarter. He's thrown it a bunch. Fourth down and three. Three receivers and a bunch to the left. 
tightly clustered formation. Ritter guns a pass. It's caught by Alec Pierce. And he has a first down at the 22 as the Bearcats pick up seven on fourth down. Yeah, nice job by Pierce. Just settled into a little window there. Great job by Ritter. F fired a strike right in there to pick up the first down. Third catch for Alec Pierce here in the first quarter. And the quarter comes to an end. Our score at the end of one, Cincinnati 7, Memphis 7. The Bearcats will have it at the Tigers 22 when the second quarter gets underway. You're listening to Bearcat football presented by r &L Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. One quarter in the books. Raise your hand if you expected Desmond Ritter to be on a pace to throw 60 passes at the end of the first quarter. He's 12 for 15 after one. Let's go down to Tony. Hard pressed not to see what you like with Desmond Ritter. The reason he's throwing 15 times is because the Memphis defense is allowing it. Every time the Bearcats go in motion, the coverage is softening, leaving those big windows to the flats and right over the middle for Des Ritter. He's done a great job connecting defensively. This defense prides themselves on not giving up points and not giving up big plays. They play aggressive. Memphis was able to use that to their advantage with that little jailbreak screen there. Don't look for the Bearcats to change anything. They're upset with themselves, more so because of the missed tackles and the missed opportunity that led to that big play. Bearcat defense just fine. Offense needs to push this in. Cincinnati score coming on a 43-yard bomb. Desmond Ritter to Alec Pierce. Memphis's score coming on a 92-yard screen pass from Brady White to Taj Washington. Jim Desmond Ritter, 12 for 15, 143 yards, one touchdown, no picks. If you use the NFL formula, that's a passer rating of 128.6 after the first quarter. Very good in the first quarter, and he stayed away from any type of turnover. Um, Bearcats just in the, you know, I know it's 7-7 seven to seven right now, but 22 plays to 10, Bearcats 22, Memphis 10. Bearcats 154 total yards in the first quarter. Memphis 101, that sounds fairly close, right? Well, you take away the 92-yard touchdown, only nine yards for Memphis. Time of possession on the Bearcats to the Bearcats' favor as well. 10 minutes and 41 seconds for the Bearcats, 4 minutes and 19 seconds for the Memphis Tigers. The Cats begin the second quarter just outside the red zone. They have it at the 22 of Memphis and line up in a pistol formation with Jared Dokes lining up behind Desmond Ritter. Jared has scored eight touchdowns in Cincinnati's first four games this year. He motions to the quarterback's left. Ritter with that big clap of the hands, no snap yet from Jake Renfro. Two receivers left, one out to the right. 
Ritter catches the snap, hands it off to Dokes, dances in the backfield, and then sneaks forward, and Power drives his way down to the 15-yard line for a seven-yard gain. Yeah, he had got to the 16 or maybe even just the 17, and Lenny Taylor comes in from the backside and pushes him forward. Cross Ball crosses the 15. So the Bearcats are inside the Toyota red zone for the first time today. On second and three, they give it to Dokes again. He's chopped down after gaining about a yard and a half third and a long yard coming up. You know, Dan, that came off the edge, and the Bearcats are going to need to protect for that, keep a tight end in and chip, because honestly, the last play that Dokes picked up the seven yards on, the edge rusher got him as well. So we kind of coming in off the edge, following Dokes into the hole and pulling him down. See if the Bearcats can adjust and, and keep these guys from coming around the side to make the tackles. Third down and a long yard. A second tight end checks in for Cincinnati. Wiley and Taylor both line up to the left. Cincinnati fakes to the right. Ritter runs to the left. He's at the 10, 5, pylon, and it is a touchdown for Desmond Ritter. He had three on the ground last week, and he has his first of the afternoon. I got to tell you what Memphis did that time. Third and one, you're thinking run all the way, right? They bring two additional guys up into the box. One kind of outside linebacker slash safety guy, their nickel guy. The other side, they bring up another safety, and it was the fake the dokes that sucked those guys to the inside, allowed Ritter to get to the edge and into the end zone. So a minute into the second quarter, Cincinnati is back in front, and kicker Cole Smith will try to make it a seven-point Bearcats lead. The sophomore from Middletown ready to go. As James Smith, the holder, puts his right knee on the turf, looks back at the kicker for the signal that Cole Smith is ready. Now turns his head toward the long snapper. Here comes Cole Smith's kick, and he crushes it through. Keep it. 14-7 Bearcats after the touchdown run by Desmond Ritter. 13 yards on the run on third and a long yard, capping an 11-play, 75-yard scoring drive that took 5.09 off the clock. Yeah, I think the aggressiveness, the previous play where the guy came around the edge and, and was able to get to Jared Dokes, they did the same thing there, and when Ritter put that ball in Dokes' gut and faked the, the read option or, or pulled it out of there, the edge guy was right there ready to tackle Dokes. That allowed Des Ritter to get around the edge. He did the rest on his own by outrunning the secondary to the corner, corner pylon. So nice job by Ritter, and he just had one heck of a football game at SMU last week, and he has picked up where that left off so far today. The big play on the drive, the fourth and four conversion on the final play of the first quarter. Kept the drive alive with a seven-yard pass to Alec Pierce. Now the run-up and the kickoff from Cole Smith. A long line drive, and this one will bounce in the end zone and go out of bounds after crossing the goal line. That's a touchback, and Memphis will have it at the 25-yard line. Yeah, nice placement there by Cole Smith. Corner midway through the end zone, but didn't kick it out of bounds. And uh, you got to think that what Memphis was able to do with the 92-yard pass completion from Brady White to, uh, to Washington is just a fluke for this Bearcat defense. Not that they can't beat you in other ways, but you got to make a tackle when you, literally that, that play should have been a two- or three-yard gain, if, if even maybe no, no gain at all. Mentioned earlier that Brady White is in his sixth college season. This year, due to the coronavirus, any player in the country yeah, he can get can another come one back <laughs> and it has been speculated that maybe he would consider coming back for a seventh college season now obviously he didn't play seven years or six years but he has been on college rosters for six seasons pistol formation on first and ten from the 25 white catches turns left fakes the handoff throws and it's overthrown and incomplete penalty flags down on a throw intended for Calvin Austin Came from the back judge all the way in the back. I think you're going to get a hold on the Bearcats. Five to the pass, holding. Defense number 12. Ten yard penalty, automatic, first down. Sauce Gardner tied for the National League in interceptions with three, but he has been guilty of quite a few penalties this yeah, year. Yeah, and that was his guy there, and the ball overthrown to Austin, Calvin Austin, and I think what he did is Austin came out of his break and Gardner grabbed his jersey. Ten yards on the penalty, first and ten from the 35 now for Memphis. White with a zone read, he throws, and it is incomplete. 
Nice Good jarring hit Wiggins. by Jay Wiggins, uh, J James Wiggins at the 50-yard line to knock that ball away. Wow, nice break on the ball by Wiggins. Came up and knocked that ball away right as it was being hauled in. So he literally broke that pass play up on his own. Tight end Sean Dykes, the intended receiver. He's a good one. And for James Wiggins, that's his fifth pass deflection of the year. Second and 10 for Memphis. White hands it off. It's a sweep to the right. Blockers in front. Nice job by Arquan Bush to come up and put a hit on Kylan Watkins, who picked up six. Yeah, that was one Bush felt. He came in from his uh, nickelback position and went right into the thighs of the running back that time. So third and uh, four. Austin goes out to the right. Taj Washington, who had the 92-yard touchdown catch, one of three receivers who stretches out to the left. Ball near the right hash on third and four. White trying to draw the Bearcats offside. He's been able to get MyJ Sanders to jump twice so far today. Play clock winding down to five. Now Brady White is ready for the shotgun snap. White has the ball. Four-man rush. White with time. Now he is sacked back at the 35-yard line by the big man in the middle, Marcus, Marcus Brown. Brown. Marcus Brown. And I'll tell you what, you hear the term a lot, coverage sack. And this bonded Bearcat secondary did a great job of covering everybody. Brady White could find nobody open, hung on to the ball, realized I got to get out of here. And the minute he did that, Marcus Brown was there to grab him and throw him down. Marcus Brown was being held on that play yes, by he the was. center. Manuel Arona Lopez didn't matter. He still was able to sack Brady White. Memphis will punt for the third time today. Cincinnati leading 14-7, 12-25 left in the half. A very wobbly punt will be fair caught against the chest by Cincinnati's Ryan Montgomery. A 38-yard punt. The Bearcats will take over at their own 28 yard line we have a timeout on the field 12 20 left in the half 14 7 uc you're listening to bearcat football presented by rnl carriers on news radio 700 wlw Seventh-ranked Bearcats lead Memphis 14-7, 12-20 left, second quarter here at Nippert Stadium. Coming into the game, Brady White was averaging 343.8 passing yards per game. Desmond Ritter averaging about 181 passing yards per game. So far today, 143 for Des, 95 for Brady White, and 92 of White's 95 came on a screen. Yeah, literally a lateral pass um, that... Uh that he threw probably about 20 yards out into the flat and blocked well. You can't take anything away from Memphis on that. But um, 
Bearcats, with the exception of that play, obviously holding him down. And Bearcats will take over on offense from their own 28-yard line. They have Jerome Ford in the game at running back. It is the 28, first okay. and 10 Cincinnati. Bearcats will line up in a pistol. That's not unusual, but then the running back often shifts to either the left or right of the quarterback, Desmond Ritter. That has not happened yet. Two receivers right, one out to the left. Ritter turns right, gives it to Jerome Ford, lowers the shoulder pads, and gets knocked down at the 31 after a three-yard run. Boy, it looked like if he could have got back to the inside, he had a lot of green in front of him, and Ford couldn't avoid that, um, that collision there. Gets three, but thought maybe he was going to get into the next level and be fighting for a first down there. Ford averaging four yards per carry in his first year as a Bearcat after spending last year with Alabama. Second and seven, Cincinnati from the 31. Ritter ready for the shotgun snap. The junior quarterback has the ball, fakes a handoff and runs to the right. Ritter has the first down, and he'll trot out of bounds without being touched. After running past the marker by one yard, he goes out at the 39. Yeah, he did a good job there, and he's using his speed, and both his touchdown and that run there, you see his speed laterally where he appears to be even faster and we saw that last week on his 91-yard touchdown at SMU is when he goes north-south. My goodness, he got some speed. Getting to the edge, he just took his time there. He knew he could get the first down and did. Six runs, 27 yards for Desmond Ritter. That includes a seven-yard sack early in the game. First and 10 Cincinnati, the Cats at their own 39-yard line. High snap caught by Ritter, fakes the handoff, rolls right, short pass caught by Wiley, and then he is upended after a short gain he's pulled down at the 42 a gain of three yep nice little just quick toss out there by Ritter figured Wiley could get more than he could if he ran the ball Ritter already just uh, five minutes not even four minutes into the second quarter here has hit eight different receivers in his passing game today wow. two catches for Josh Wiley so far leading receivers are young and Pierce with three apiece Second and seven, you see the Cats at their own 42 on top by seven points. Ritter catches another shotgun snap, loads up, fires, bobbled, and incomplete. Mm. Intended for Jordan Jones, close to the first down marker, did a juggling act and couldn't come down with the ball. Yeah, it might be the first bad pass Ritter's thrown today. When I say bad pass, it wasn't like it was, you know, fluttering or anything, but thrown into heavy traffic that time. Although Jones could have come down with it if he makes a spectacular catch. Leonard Taylor exits, Josh Wiley in. He's one of three receivers out to the right. Wiley closest to the formation. Big third down and seven play coming up. Ritter drops back against a four-man rush. Under pressure, gets away from a sack. Dez running up the middle of the field. He's tackled short of the first down at the 47. Two yards short. Yep, going to be fourth and two. And Luke Fickle gamble here, or does he send the punting unit on? No punting unit yet. No punt. I would think. Not yet. Cam Jones comes into the game. Huh. As does Leonard Taylor. So three tight ends on the field. Fourth and two. Scoreboard shows fourth and one, but it's fourth and two. Ball's at the 47. Bearcats. Have Desmond Ritter under center on a very unusual formation on fourth and two. Looks like they're just going to take the uh, five-yard penalty and allow James Smith to punt the ball. And that is the case. Yep, so they call a timeout before that, but nonetheless, that's the, that's the plan. Trying to draw Memphis out offside with the unusual formation, and Desmond did bark out signals. Memphis didn't bite, and we figure to see James Smith now. Yes, sir. He's already pinned. Memphis inside the 10 once today. And then the Tigers answered with a 92-yard screen pass touchdown. We'll take a timeout. 9.38 left in the half. 14-7. Cincinnati. Bearcat football presented by RL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW.
so correctly we are now running an ad that includes the term future hall of famer joe burrow <laughs> pretty amusing stuff seven games into his nfl career but he has been awfully impressive top 300 passing yards in five out of seven 406 last week see if he can do it again tomorrow against luke pickles closest friend tennessee titans head coach mike Vrabel. they were teammates for three years at ohio state they coached together at ohio state when luke was interim head coach back in 2011 they speak frequently they're involved in a charity together so the Bengals will try to a spoil a sunday afternoon for mike grable who's obviously done a great job at tennessee got the titans to the afc championship game a year ago and tennessee is five and one so far this year a lot of similarities there he really has his team always ready to play i'm not saying the style of offense or defense but the way that he's able to motivate the team and keep them in every game and Luke Fickle's been able to do that here at Cincinnati as well. Bearcats will punt on fourth and two near midfield unless they fake. They snap it back to James Smith, puts the nose of the ball down, lofts a high end over end punt. Bearcat at the seven. James Smith is money. Yes, he is. The Tigers take over at their own seven yard line. Yeah, and he's he's absolutely very content on getting the ball inside the 10 doesn't try to put it at the one or the two you mentioned the two touchbacks in his career again if that ball's at the two you're going to see um, Austin who is the punt returner jump out of the way there and let that ball try to go into the end zone but um, nice job by James Smith you brought it up also Dan this is the spot right after the punt where Memphis scored on a 92 yard touchdown pass they're backed up to their own seven now, so that would make it a 93, but see what the Bearcats can dial up defensively. The wide receiver that had the 92-yarder goes out widest to the right. Two receivers to that side. Austin out to the left. Brady White in the pistol. First and 10 from the seven with Cincinnati up 14-7. It's a run behind right tackle. Now Rodriguez Clark is able to turn the corner. Makes it all the way out to the 17, uh, to the 12-yard line, rather, a five-yard pickup. Ethan Tucky there, Jarrell White, Arquan Bush. More of a gain than I thought it was going to be. Clark was able to keep his feet there as he took the first hit on. Second down and five for the Tigers. They will give it to Clark again, and he's stoned, trying to run right up the middle. Well, good job by him. Didn't go down initially, and although uh, Beavers had him at the line of scrimmage, Rodriguez Clark was able to muscle his way out to the 16. Yeah, that's two in a row and uh, Memphis to the line quickly here. Third down and a yard for the Memphis Tigers. Brady White ready for the snap in the pistol formation. Cincinnati has three down linemen and a seven man box. Third and one, Brady White is back to throw. His pass up the seam, nowhere near the intended receiver. Austin, it's incomplete and it's fourth and one. Clearly wanted a slant route there. Penalty on that play? I don't see a flag. No. I don't know what the whistles were for the, you hear a whistle like that, you're thinking and the Memphis team never left the field. I'm thinking there's a flag hidden somewhere, but nice job by the Bearcat defense. It looked like White was expecting uh, Calvin Austin to run a slant route there. Austin kind of ran kind of in the seam there. I'm not really sure what he was running. It looked like he was trying to get outside. Uh, certainly quarterback and receiver on different pages there. That's a curious play call on third and one deep in your own territory. Now you've got to punt it away and the Bearcats should get it near midfield. And they're going to call Memphis going to call a timeout. Memphis takes their first choice timeout of the half. Timeout on the field. So you've got a three a third and one around your own 16 yard line. If you're going to pass, that's fine, but you got to do something really safe. Well, don't particularly you? that's what been what Memphis's offense is, the little quick RPOs, allowing guys to run with the ball after they catch it, something very safe, almost an extended, you know, pitch out or handoff. But in this case, um, I think they thought they had the slant route there and in this case Austin the wide receiver ran kind of a seam route. Let's take a timeout. 8.18 left in the half. 14-7 Bearcats on News Radio.
country. And again, to Memphis's credit, they pulled off the big screen for a 92-yard yes, TD. But everything else they've tried has been stuffed by Marcus Freeman's defense. And now Memphis will punt. Adam Williams back at the two-yard line, waiting for Trison Neal's long snap. Again, they have that big 280-yard personal protector who is a threat to take the direct snap and run. Don't Ryan Montgomery waiting back at the 41 to return for Cincinnati. It is fourth and one. They snap it back to the punter. And again, it's a low, wobbly punt. Montgomery gets hit by his own teammate. The ball is bouncing backward. Did Cincinnati touch it? We've got a pile back at the 31-yard line, and the Bearcats recover. I don't know that he touched it. It was certainly his guy that ran into him. Bearcats recover, but they lost about 15 yards of field position on that. If they didn't touch it, Ryan Montgomery did not have to run back no, and try to recover. But it. you don't know at that particular point, particularly since you're being hit. Do you know that if you know, did you know, do you know if that ball hit you or not? You've got to react the way that Montgomery did. And I believe he came up with the ball as well. So the Bearcats dodge a bullet. Yeah, in a, in a year with flawless special teams play, pretty much flawless, um, that's, a, that's a blunder on the Bearcats' punt return team there. So the Cats have it first and 10 at their own 30. Cincinnati leading the game 14-7. 8-18 left in the half here at Nippert Stadium. Ritter in the gun with Dokes to his left. Ball's in the middle of the field. Shotgun snap. Ritter with a three-step drop. Fires deep down the left sideline for Pierce. We've got early contact. The pass is incomplete, and there yes. are the penalty flags. So the, the back judge or the side judge waited for the guy underneath him to throw the flag, and then he threw it. Pass interference. Defense number 22. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So the Bearcats will get the 15 yards back that they, they lost on the muffed punt, and that was clearly pass interference. Ball a little bit underthrown. Alec Pierce did what he needed to do. He can really go up for the ball, so he was positioning himself to get that ball at its high point. And when he slowed down to go up for that football, he got run into from the back by the secondary, by the cornerback, and that's what created the defensive pass interference. Alec injured his left shoulder on the play. The training staff will take a look behind the bench. Jay Sean Jackson checks in. First and 10 after the 15-yard penalty. Ritter throws toward the far sideline, caught five yards up the field. And Young is pulled out of bounds. He ran backward, and they're going to yeah. mark it as a – no, they give him the uh, forward progress. Well, no, they're going to mark it uh, no, just he, a three-yard gain. He had the 50 gain, but when he was thrown back, he was still standing up and fighting for yardage, so they gave him out at the 48. Alec Pierce has gone into the medical tent. His left arm was dangling after that pass interference penalty against Memphis. Second and seven, you see the Cats at their own 48, up by a touchdown here in the second quarter. We're midway through the second. Ritter catches another shotgun snap. Zone read handoff. Dokes breaks a tackle, running to the 30, and he goes down to the first down at the Memphis 38-yard line, a 14-yard run for Jared Dokes. Well, high risk, high reward on Memphis's defense that time. Seven guys in the box, and all of them pushed up field. And what happens there, if you make the tackle, it's a tackle for loss or no gain. But Dokes broke through there, and then that put him out there with blockers as well as just four secondary guys to beat. And he was able to weave his way through there and pick up the first down. First and 10 at the Memphis 38-yard line. Seven minutes to go, second quarter at Nippert Stadium. Josh Wiley motions one way, reverses direction, goes the other. Ritter's back to throw. Pump fakes, throws. Wiley with a catch. He's down to the 30. Tries to hurdle a defender at the 25. The defender got his tippy toes and knocked him down at the 23. It's still a 15-yard game. I would do that all day long with Taylor, with Jackson, your slot receiver, or Wiley. Put your guys out, push down, and bring somebody across underneath. Let Ritter pick where he wants to throw to him. It's wide, wide open. Impressive vertical by Josh yes. Wiley, although they did get him down. Tackle made by the safety, Quindell Johnson. First and 10, just outside of the red zone at the 23 of Memphis. Empty backfield, five wides. Here comes a quarterback draw, and Memphis brings down Desmond Ritter after a two-yard game. Yeah, he gets through that tackle there. Man, he's uh, he's still running. Yeah, but nice job there. Goodson, the defensive lineman, helps Ritter up off the, uh, off the ground. Nice piece of sportsmanship there as well. After Goodson had made the tackle. Yes. So second down and eight coming up. 
Dokes exits, Jerome Ford enters. Clock running with 5.52 left in the half. Two receivers out to the right. Jordan Jones out to the left. The tight end is Lenny Taylor on second and eight. Ritter gives it to Ford. Has a hole right side, 15, 14, and he's tackled one yard short of a Bearcats first down inside the Toyota red zone. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com for all Toyota offers. Toyota, let's go places. Yep, going to be a third and one. We'll see if the Bearcats get to the line quickly and try to pick this one up. Nice job by Ford. I got to tell you, great offensive line push that time. Ford had his, he had a couple of different holes that he could have hit that time on that zone run. Two tight ends in for Cincinnati, but they're both detached and lining up to the left. Now they motion and are attached to the left side of the formation. On third down and one, Ritter catches the shotgun snap, gives it to Dokes, finds a hole up the middle, and he has a first down at the nine. It's first and goal for Cincinnati. This is an important touchdown that the Bearcats need to get here. Really with put some separation between them and Memphis and not another freak play that Memphis could come back and tie it. Shotgun snap, Ritter gives it to Dokes again, lowers the shoulder pads and makes it down to the six. A three yard run for Jarrett. You know, this is where we would tend to see Ritter pull the ball out and either throw it or run it himself. Des has a 13 yard touchdown run in this game. Ran for three scores last week, including a 91 yarder. Leonard Taylor comes out, an extra wide receiver checks in. Young and Jackson go out to the left. Wiley and Jones go out to the right. Second and goal from the six. Cincinnati up by seven points. Ritter surveys the Memphis defense. Jackson goes in motion, lines up in the slot to the left. Ritter looking right, looks back to the left, throws over the middle, caught for the touchdown. Pulled in by Michael Young. And the Bearcats have gone up by two TDs. I'll tell you what. How about that throw? Nice job by Des Ritter and even uh, equally as good a job by Michael Young of catching a very hard thrown football. Second touchdown pass of the game for Desmond Ritter. The first a 43 yarder to Alec Pierce and this one a six yard bullet into the end zone to Michael Young. Yep, Oliver the cornerback right on Young's hip but thrown perfectly by Desmond Ritter to where only Michael Young could catch the football. And the way he looked to the right, then looked to the bat left, and then came back over the middle. Great job by Desmond Ritter. Here comes the PAT from Cole Smith. He remains perfect today. He's only missed one this season. And the Bearcats have gone up by 14 for the first time in this game. We have a timeout with 4.04 left in the half. 21 to seven Cincinnati. You're listening to Bearcat Football presented by RNL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. Well, you got to love what you're seeing from this Bearcats offense in so many ways. You can get enamored with the fact that it's been so easy in the passing game. But what Mike Denbrock has been able to do is mix in enough of the run. All of a sudden you look up and the Bearcats have possessed the ball for 18 minutes in this first half. When you're going against a powerful offense like Memphis, it's important to score. It's also just important to keep them off the field. The Bearcats have done both so far in the first half. And now the conversation is finish, finish this half because Memphis does get the ball coming out. Another good, de another good defensive performance needed on this drive. Quick word of warning about the Memphis Tigers in their game against UCF. They trailed by 21 midway through the third quarter, 35 to 14. They were down by 12 with less than four minutes to go. Came back to win that game 50 to 49. They did get some help at the end of the game as UCF 
had a very makeable field goal for the win and missed from 40 yards out. Yeah, and some untimely penalties for UCF as well to help Memphis along, not taking anything away from Memphis. That was a great win. It was a great football game. But the Bearcat defense just needs to, needs to do what they do well. And Memphis came in almost identical. If you look at what they were doing offensively, both through the running game, the passing game, and how efficient their offense was, very, very similar to what the Bear, what the, we saw last week at SMU. 49% on third downs is Memphis on the year. And today, one out of uh, five, so 20%. So nice job by the Bearcat defense. So if they can get off the field here, and I guarantee you Memphis is saying we've got to score before halftime. Memphis is due to get the ball to begin the third quarter. Alec Pierce was in the medical tent for a while, having his shoulder looked at, and now they have taken him to the locker room. That would be a shame. He missed the first few games of the year after hurting his knee in training camp. Now that he's back and has a spectacular touchdown catch today, he got interfered with on a passing play, and when he got up, his left arm was dangling like an elephant's trunk, which is never a good sign. Yep, when he tangled up that time with the corner, he went up in the air. He was interfered with. Both guys hit the ground, and obviously I believe it was his left shoulder that hit the ground. And that seems to be the injury. Cole Smith ready to kick it off. 21-7 Cincinnati the score. Got about four minutes to go in the half. The run up and the kick. A spinning end over end kick. And it will be caught one yard deep in the end zone and run out after a delay by Javon Ivories at the 15. Met there and he'll be tackled at the 16 yard line. Excellent coverage by Ty Van Fossen hustling down the field and getting to the returner first. Yeah, never a good thing when you're, you hesitate. Do I run this out or do I not? Let me think about this a second. Too late. You know, that's one of those things. If you bring it out right away, sure, you maybe get to the 20, the 25, or you break a big one. But you hesitate like that, not, all, not good. The wrong football in there. Got the Bearcat football. There we go with the Memphis football. They're going to spot it at the 16-yard line. First and 10 for Memphis from the 16. Brady White is ready for the shotgun snap, has the ball, rolling out to the left, in trouble. Now he is scrambling for his life, and he'll be sacked back at the 10-yard line. Brady White never had a chance, and he's brought down for a three-yard sack. Yeah, he got out of the first one there. I think it was Sanders who had him the first time. He stepped up, went the other way, and man, nice job. Six-yard loss on the sack. Ponder Ponder. Ponder. Yep, Ponder got Eventually him. Eventually gets credit for the sack for Cincinnati, the top-ranked edge defender in college football, according to the gurus at Pro Football Focus. Here's a pass over the middle, a sliding attempt, and it is a catch and a first down. Nice sliding grab by Kelvin Austin on a low throw. Very low, got down under it, Memphis to the line quickly so that that one can't be reviewed. He was right at the first down marker, and I think it will be reviewed. No, I They're think the referee the got the signal. He got the signal from upstairs. It was a catch. Yeah, they just blew their whistles to move the sticks. So a 13-yard gain on second and 13, and Memphis has a first down at the 26-yard line with three minutes to go in the half, and the Bearcats up by 14 points. Yeah, now Memphis will take their time since they know that it's going to count. Brady White is ready out of a pistol formation, does a pirouette, hands it off. Watkins, the runner, and he is dragged down for a short gain. Tackled by Jarrell White. Leads the conference in tackles. A two-yard pickup on the play. Yeah, nice job by White. A little bit of the jersey, but it was in the middle of the back, kind of in the right in the number area, so that doesn't count as a horse collar. Second and nine officially for the Tigers at their own 27-yard line. Brady White drops back to throw. Blitz coming. His short pass caught. And then Cincinnati shoves Dykes, the tight end, out of bounds at the 30. A three-yard pickup, third down and six. Yeah, as the, ball, as the clock gets down to two minutes here, in, important situation to keep Memphis inbound. They used one timeout. They've got two left, I believe. That clock keeps moving. Third down and six for the Tigers at their own 30. One deep safety for the Bearcats. It's Javon Hicks who's into the game. 
Brady White will drop back to throw against a four-man rush. Pocket closes. White in trouble. He gets away from a sack, and he'll run for the first down. He's finally tackled by Darian Beavers after scrambling for seven and a first down. Boy, he sure did scramble, and he, he got about one yard more than what he needed, maybe two. Memphis gets to the line quickly as the clock goes down to 140. Cincinnati up by 14 points. White catches the shotgun snap from the pocket, flings it deep downfield, overthrown and incomplete, intended for Calvin Austin. Yep, no chance that time. Sauce Gardner and Austin got tangled up once earlier in the game, and Gardner was called for holding. In this case, ball well overthrown. Taj Ward will check into the game. Arquan Bush will come out. Cincinnati has incredible depth in the secondary. I mentioned that Javon Hicks is in there on this series. Spelling Derek Foster. Or Derek Forrest, excuse me. Second and ten. Tigers have it at their own 37-yard line. Receiver goes in motion from left to right. White throws a screen. Caught out to the right. Blockers in front. Bearcats rally to the ball, and Hicks makes the tackle, but it's a 10-yard gain and a first down to the 47-yard line. Yeah, it's the same, uh, same play that they scored on. Basically brought the tight end across. He got out there to block with another wide out. This one not quite as much success, but successful enough to give the Tigers another first down. Kai Matthew with the catch, the first of his college career. He is Tyron Matthews' cousin, the Honey Badger. Second and 10 from the 47. We're down to 106 left in the half. Cincinnati up 21-7. Here's a 360-degree spin and a handoff, and Darian Beavers makes the tackle for a loss on Rodriguez Clark. There's a penalty flag down at the 44-yard line. Yeah, it, something to do with Van and an offensive lineman out there. That was Dylan Parnum, who is the offensive lineman, hooked up with uh, Malik Van, and they believe it's going against Cincinnati. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 42. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Mm. Would have been a three yard loss on the run. Instead, it's a 15 yard penalty, and Memphis has it at the Cincinnati 38 with 59 seconds left in the half. Brady White ready for the shotgun snap. Standing back at the 43 of Cincinnati. Here comes an edge blitz. White throws it quickly, it's caught, and it's going to be a decent pickup. It's going to go for a first down, down to the Cincinnati 25 yard line. The number two tight end on the depth chart, Cameron Wilson with his first catch of the game. And Memphis is closing in on the red zone with 47 seconds left in the half. Yeah, I thought James Wiggins thought he was gonna step out of bounds and he kind of paused, and that allowed the receiver to gather himself and run up the field and pick up some yards after catch. Derek Forrest back in at safety now. Brian Cook is also in the game. First and 10 at the Cincinnati 24-yard line with 47 seconds left in the half. White with two receivers left, looking left, cocks the arm, throws. It is incomplete. He had his tight end, Sean Dykes, breaking open behind Jarrell White at the goal line and they could not hook up. Yeah, Jarrell White and Arquan Bush talking to each other there, whose man was that? And they both were there, but they let him go thinking the other one had him. And boy, very fortunate there for the Bearcats that that ball's incomplete and not a touchdown. 42 seconds left in the half, second and 10 at the Bearcat 24. Memphis trying to score to end the half before getting the ball to begin the third quarter with the Bearcats leading 21-7. Empty backfield now for Brady White. Three receivers left, two right. He's back to throw. Short slant, knocked down by a leaping Sauce Gardner as he pounced in front of the intended receiver on that slant and knocked it away. Man, that was an outstanding play by Gardner there. Thought he might pick that ball. He was that much of a, made that much of a break on it. So here's another third down for Memphis. Pass was intended for Calvin Austin. Came into the game averaging nearly 18 yards per catch. Third down and 10 at the Cincinnati 24. Bearcats have five defenders up front. White back to throw. It's a four-man rush. Brady White scrambling out to the left, squares his shoulders in his pass. Nowhere near any intended receivers. Taj Washington was closest, 
and Memphis will have to settle for a field goal try. Yeah, I think that ball was tipped right at the line of scrimmage or right at it, right as Brady White released it. Nobody out there. Fortunate for Memphis that the ball just goes harmlessly to turf. Now nah, it wasn't hit. He just threw it badly. So here comes one of the best kickers in college football, Riley Patterson. Has a 56-yarder this year. He was practicing from 58 in the pregame warm-up. So by his standards, this is short, 42 yards. Has missed three times this year. Low snap. The kick is on its way, and it is good. Nice job by the holder to handle that low snap. Keep it. And Riley Patterson's rhythm was not thrown. He drives through the 42-yard field goal to make it a 21-10 Bearcat lead. Yeah, nice job by the holder, absolutely. And Bearcats will get the ball on this kickoff at 28 seconds to go. Not much time to do anything. This might be one where Trey Tucker catches the ball one or two yards deep or even in the field of play that he takes a shot at it. Takes, carries that ball and runs that ball back. We'll see. That was a 12-play, 60-yard drive for Memphis, helped by the 15-yard face, face mask penalty against Malik Van. Sure was helped by that. That was Memphis's first real sustained drive. So we're down to 28 seconds to go. 21 to 10 Cincinnati. Bearcats trying to end a five-game losing streak head-to-head -head against the Memphis Tigers while looking to extend a 16-game Nippert Stadium winning streak. Fourth longest home winning streak in college football behind Clemson with 26, Notre Dame with 22, Ohio State with 21. It wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be surprised to see Patterson squib this one too. He approaches the ball at the 35-yard line nope. and kicks it high and deep. Trey Tucker might as well run this one back and he will from the three-yard line. The speedsters at the 15, opens up at the 20, and a good open field tackle made at the 22-yard line by the Memphis Tigers as Sanchez Blake yes. had an interception against Cincinnati last year, made the stop. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's easy to see from up here, but if Tucker takes that back to the right, he's got a little bit of running room. Nonetheless, nice job. Certainly worth the risk. Looks like the Bearcats will take a knee as they line up in quote-unquote victory formation with 22 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Ritter's under center. Hopes to be doing this again in about an hour and a half. Takes the snap, takes a knee, and the final 22 seconds will run off the clock. We invite you to stay tuned for Mo Egger and the RNL Carriers Halftime Report. It's brought to you by RNL Carriers, your global transportation provider. Visit rlc.com. At the half, Cincinnati 21, Memphis 10. This is Bearcat Football on News Radio 700 WLW. This is Bearcat Football on News Radio 700 WLW. Go down music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ghouls and goblins, 
please welcome for the first time this season the entire 250 member University of Cincinnati Bearcat Marching Band for a very unique and special Halloween halftime presentation. Today's From the Stands halftime performance is full of Halloween chills and thrills. We start off with a tune from the all time best selling album in the world, Michael Jackson's Thriller, an unofficial Halloween anthem, a song from the 80s that is still wildly popular not just for being creepy, but for having the most significant music video and dance moves in all of pop culture. Feel the electricity in the air and join in with your own dance moves, or maybe your own moonwalk, as the Bearcat Band presents their rendition of Thriller. The Bearcat Band's next tune is from the 70s rock musical and Halloween classic, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's astounding. Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. Instead of being remembered for the scary characters and story, the musical and movie were hugely popular for the audience participation activities in the show. The next song is still popular at dances and weddings, so the Bearcat Band hopes you will feel free to get up, join in, and do the famous dance with the band as they invite you to do the time warp.
Now, what would Halloween be without ghosts? So, to close out our Halloween show on this scariest day of the year, we're featuring the Ghostbusters movie from Dan Aykroyd that became a scary comedy cult classic. Do you remember the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man that destroyed part of New York City? He seemed harmless and puffy and cute, but given the right circumstances, everything can turn bad and become evil. Hey, look, in the stands, in front of the band, is he back again? Where is he? Looks like we're going to need some help. Okay, now, can you remember? Say it with me. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, if it's something weird and it don't look good, who are you going to call? That's right, Ghostbusters! Let's hear it for the Bearcats band. And is that the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man still in the middle of the band? The Bearcat band would like to thank you for your attention and support this unusual football season. The Bearcat band cheer and dance teams are grateful for the opportunity to support our number seven ranked Bearcat football team. 2020 will be remembered as a very unusual year. The Bearcat band has gone to great lengths Man. In the first half, Jim Kelly, 20 pass attempts, completed 80% of them, 16 for 20, 170 yards, couple of touchdowns, no picks. He also ran eight times. Most of those were scrambled, not designed runs, but uh, 28 touches for Desmond Ritter, two touchdown passes, one touchdown run. Yeah, coming off a great game at SMU last week where primarily he ran the ball, but he threw the ball a little bit. A little bit different today. Throwing ball, that 16 out of 20, Dan, is impressive for the 170 yards and the two touchdowns. Threw uh, passes and completed them to eight different receivers. Michael Young, the leading receiver, with five catches for 43 yards and a touchdown. Alec Pierce, who unfortunately left the game uh, with a shoulder injury, is being looked at in the locker room. We don't have any update on him at this point. But um, Alec, of course, six, three catches for 61 yards and a touchdown. And the Bearcats... Not surprisingly, throwing the ball a lot more than they normally do today against the Memphis team that came in, giving up well over 400 yards against the pass. And then you have the sorcery of defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman. That was the term that came up after the game last week. Last week, they held an SMU team averaging 563 yards to 290. So far today, they've been able to hold a team averaging 549 yards to 155 that would project to 310 
roughly what SMU was able to get last week. Well, and take away a 92-yard touchdown that was, uh, you know, a great play, but at the same time certainly could have been a one-yard gain or a two-yard gain. The defense playing very, very well. And they're going to be tested here. Memphis, you mentioned it a couple of times in, in our first half broadcast. Memphis, a second-half team, they've been able to come back from deficits that it doesn't look like you're going to be able to come back from. So we'll see what they do. And um, the defense playing very, very well, again, with the exception of that 92-yard touchdown pass. Memphis only scored 10 points in the first half last week as well against Temple and then scored 31 after halftime. You've been listening to the RNL Carriers Halftime Report presented by RNL Carriers, your global transportation provider. Visit RLC.com. Back with the second half in a moment. This is Bearcat Football on News Radio 700 WLW. No, they have an 11-point halftime lead over the 3-1 and one Memphis Tigers under new head coach Ryan Silverfield. He was an assistant under Mike Norvell, who left Memphis prior to their bowl game last year to go to Florida State. Silverfield served as the head coach in the Cotton Bowl against Penn State. The Nittany Lions scored 53 points in that game, beat Memphis 53-39. to That was a game where Memphis scored three touchdowns and kicked six field goals. Had they been able to score in the red zone in the Cotton Bowl last year, they might have knocked off Penn State. Yeah, they were very competitive in that game and certainly a fun team to watch last year. And Coach Silverfield was on that offensive staff and um, interesting to see an offensive line coach get elevated to, uh, to a head coach. It happens, but usually it's a running back, receiver, somebody that was more in the uh, the skill position side of things on the offensive, but, but uh, he's done a good job. Uh, Coach Norvell's struggling a little bit down at Florida State right now. Not that he's any cause for it, but Florida State's struggling. But um, they had a good football team last year, of course, won the conference. And um, talked about some of the weapons they've lost, but also talked about some of the weapons they still have and that they've been able to, to kind of elevate this year. Ryan Silverfield turned down big money offers from big 10 big 12 schools to leave memphis and be an assistant coach elsewhere but he knew there was a pretty good chance that mike norvell at some point would leave for a big bucks offer which he did and then he basically told the memphis administration interview anybody you want and then talk to me and uh I'm confident you'll want to hire me after the end of that process. Yeah, quite a uh, stand by him, and um, he very openly wanted the job, and, and he got it. So, and he's done a good job. He kept Memphis's offensive coordinator, Kevin Johns, mm -hmm. even after Mike Norvell left, largely because Mike Norvell called his own plays. So even Ooh. though Kevin Johns had the title offensive coordinator, he did not have the opportunity to call plays before, and he gets that now. And the defensive coordinator is new 
Mike McIntyre, if that name sounds familiar, he spent six years as the head coach of Colorado. Yeah, so, and you can kind of see the difference in the philosophy in the Memphis defense this year versus last year. And that staff on the defensive side didn't turn, didn't turn over all the way, but pretty much a whole new scheme in a, in a group of new coaches. And uh, they haven't been able to pick it up as much as they were able to defensively stop people last year. And that's hurt them a little bit this year as they've given up some points. Again, they're three and one coming in and they're in the thick of this ball game as well. This is the first of three straight home games for Cincinnati. Houston next week, East Carolina after that. ECU played on Friday night football last night. Lost to Tulsa 34 to 30. And the officiating on Tulsa's game winning drive at the end of that game was about as bad as it gets. There were three very questionable calls that all went against East Carolina as Tulsa scored the game winning touchdown with 29 seconds to go. And don't take my word for it. Scott Van Pelt of ESPN fame tweeted the following after last night's four point win for Tulsa over East Carolina quote I would have been arrested if I were an ECU coach that was Scott Van Pelt's take after the officiating late in that game there was a fourth down pass completion that kept the final drive alive for Tulsa that clearly skidded along the turf they reviewed it not quite sure why they didn't think there was definitive uh, evidence to call that incomplete, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Well, you know, East Carolina, they're here in two weeks. It's a Friday night game, and we saw what they're made of last year. They can give everybody, anybody a fit, which they did to Tulsa last night at, on Tulsa's home turf. So, um, you know, good football game last night. You know, I, I haven't seen that play yet. I will go look at it tonight. I was watching the game and, and dozed off and didn't get a chance to see the replay. So, so did the officials. <laughs> so interesting you say that, and I won't name names, but there's been a couple of coaches in this league that have said the officiating this year seems seems worse. And, and they, they're not specific to a call or a team or, or I'm sorry, to a, a specific referee or a crew or what have you, but they just have, have complained about some of the inconsistencies in the officiating. ECU has a wide receiver named Tyler Sneed. He had uh, plenty of catches against the Bearcats last yes, he year. Did. He had 16 catches last night. 16. He's a good one. They always have a guy like that. And um, for the last, gosh, for how many years, from the Big East years to the American Conference years, we've been playing East Carolina and have seen a lot of good receivers go through there. Cole Smith ready to kick it off for Cincinnati as the second half is about to begin. Bearcats have a 21 to 10 lead. Memphis kicked a field goal with less than 30 seconds to go in the second quarter. Now the Tigers get it again to begin the third. This is a very low kick. It is going to bounce at the two. It bounces sideways oh. and rolls out of bounds at the one. So that's going to give Memphis the ball at the 35 yard line. Wow, so close. Literally inside the one that ball rolled out of bounds. And the opposite of what happened last week when Cole Smith had the 80 yard touchback. Yes. In that case, the... it bounced fairly close to the sideline in between the numerals and the sideline around the 10. Tony. And fortunately for Cole, bounced straight ahead through the back of the end zone. Let's go down to Tony Pike. They've been flirting with that disaster on that kickoff. Been so good with the directional kicking, a bad break there. Huge drive here. It's well documented what Memphis can do when playing from behind. It's a different animal in the Bearcats defense. A lot going in to this first drive. The Bearcats won a three and out here. So from the 35 yard line, Brady White is ready. Hands it off. Clark being pursued from behind. He'll be tackled for a loss by My J Sanders. Close to the 33, a loss of two. Yeah, Memphis gets to the line of scrimmage quickly. Gonna try to do a little uh, up-tempo stuff, but great job there playing the run. Rodriguez Clark has eight, eight carries, carries for nine yards. Yep. Second and 11 officially. They fake to him. Here's a throw up the seam. It is caught, and it is Austin maneuvering away from defenders before Jarrell White makes the tackle at the 49. That's a 15-yard pickup. Well, just when you've watched, if you've watched Memphis on TV or if you even look at their stat sheet, you see the adjustments they're able to make at halftime and the way they're able to score points in the second half. They're showing it quickly here. First and 10 from the 49. Brady White wants to throw it deep. He launches it deep up the seam. It is incomplete, intended for 
Taj Washington and Arquan Bush is hurt. And he went down as he dove for that ball, landed on his shoulder. He'll get some medical attention as well. And not surprised at all that Memphis went up top that time. Play action and went deep. And Bush was there. Wiggins was there, well covered. Arquan Bush, one of the highest graded cornerbacks in college football so far this year. By the folks downtown Cincinnati at Pro Football Focus, he'll be replaced by sophomore Taj Ward. And Ward, no slouch himself, but can't help but think that the Memphis coaching staff sitting up here in the press box when they see a guy of that talent go down for a play or maybe more, hopefully just a play, although they're they're spending some time out there on on Bush um, that, that they might go after Taj Ward. I'm looking down on the field right now at Sauce Gardner walking around toward the Bearcat huddle now around the 40 yard line. He's got white gloves on, long white gloves, and I don't know if it's because of the gloves creating kind of an <clears throat> optical illusion, but it looks like his arms are like twice the normal length. He's got long arms, don't get me wrong, but maybe it's the white gloves or something. It looks incredible right now how long his arms appear. Well, that's certainly the long arms, not necessarily the gloves are what make him an excellent cornerback because he he has numerous knockdowns this year, past defenses, past breakups, um, and he's able to stay on a receiver's hip and then reach around them and knock the ball away without getting called for any type of interference play. Arquan Bush is sitting up as the training staff looks at the Bearcats cornerback from Euclid High School near Cleveland. Played a high school game at Euclid Stadium. When I was, when I was at Muller, we played St. Joe's. Looks Euclid. like right arm or right shoulder for Arquan Bush. That is hanging straight down. Mm -hmm. now, now he moves it a little bit, but uh, it looks like he's kind of holding that to his side as he walks off the field. So Arquan will be out. They'll take him into the medical tent. And the way they're helping him, I'm not sure it's a shoulder. Almost like they're holding him up right now. And it did, it did appear that he landed on his shoulder and that he was his shoulder was dangling there. But uh, they're going to take him into the tent and we'll, we'll find out what's wrong and we'll let you know. Second and 10 for Memphis. The Tigers at their own 49. The Bearcats up by 11. White hands it off. That was to motion. Clark. Motion. That, that's a shame because that would have been third and uh, make the tackle for a three yard loss there. Marcus Brown was all over him, but the play won't count because right. the right guard, Evan Fields, moved early. Yeah, he, he st pulled out of there and went right trying to kind of a, make it look like a, a power run or a zone run to the right. And had that play counted, it would have been third and about 12, and unfortunately they'll take, the Bearcats have no choice but to take the penalty and make it second and 15. Evan Fields is from Georgia. He was a wrestler in the 285-pound weight class. Is there one bigger than that? Uh, that would be heavyweight here. <laughs> second and 15. Here's a slant that's caught. Another catch for Calvin Austin in Bearcat territory at the 44. He's five yards short of the first down marker, so it's third and five. Nice tackle by Kobe Bryant. Did not allow any yards after catch that time. Big third down here, first one of this half. Be great to get Memphis off the field here. Get a three and out. Three receivers left, one out to the right. Brady White is ready. Receiver goes in motion toward the formation left. White back to throw, has a receiver wide open, connects with Rodriguez Clark coming out of the backfield. Clark running down inside the 20, and he gets tackled at the 17-yard line. Yeah, big time, big time mess up in uh, coverage that time. Everybody followed the receiver into the inside and let the back go on a wheel route to the outside. Nice catch that time by Rodriguez Clark. The ball was high, and he makes the most of it. 28 yards on the play. It's first and 10 at the Cincinnati 18-yard line. Here's a handoff to Rodriguez Clark, and he gets knocked down at the 15 after a three-yard run. Yeah, he, he, he does a nice job of running after first contact and picking up additional yardage. We saw him a couple of times in the first half get yardage after he was looked like he was stopped, and he does the same thing there. The second and seven, critical play here. Elijah Ponder on the stop, second down and seven. 
at the 15-yard line. Memphis trying to make it a one-score game. Brady White claps the hands, has the ball, hands it off. Cincinnati tackles Clark. It's my Jay Sanders who reached out with his long arms, grabbed the running back, and pulled him down. Yeah, he sure did, and he looked like he was going to be able to get out of there, and Clark would not let go, or I'm sorry, uh, Sanders would not let go of that foot. So here we go, third and eight. Beg your pardon, that was actually Kylan Watkins on that run. He right. stays in the game at running back. Third down and eight at the Cincinnati 16-yard line. Brady White is ready. Cincinnati sends four. White steps up in the pocket, pump fakes, trying to run for the first down, went down into a feet-first slide early, two yards short of the first down. So he could have continued to run, might have taken a hit, probably would have picked, it up, picked up the first down, but he went down. Looks like Memphis will go for it on fourth and two. Yeah, he would have. He would have had it clearly if he opted to take the hit. Fourth and two, this is huge. At the Cincinnati 10, Memphis sends out three receivers wide right. Watkins in the backfield. Brady White ready for the shotgun snap. Cincinnati showing edge pressure as Jarrell White was sneaking up. Play clock is down to five. Brady White is ready. Play clock approaching zero. They snap it. White from the pocket, scrambling, throws into the end zone, incomplete. Looking for a flag. No, no, flag. no flag. So the Bearcats stop Memphis on fourth and two. Goes Darius Beavers over there. Great coverage. Got the receiver in this particular case, Sean Dykes, talking to the official saying, why didn't you throw that flag? But no flag. So the Bearcats stop Memphis on downs, and Brady White's decision to go into a feet first slide hurts the Memphis Tigers. The Bearcats will take over at their own 10. 11-16 left in the third quarter. It's 21 to 10 Bearcats. This is UC Football presented by RNL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. Tony Pike, Mo Egger, and Ben Jarvis, Brad Ellis with you today from Nippert Stadium. Gorgeous day in Cincinnati, bright sunshine throughout the game, a few cotton ball clouds overhead, and the undefeated seventh-ranked Bearcats on top, 21-10. to 10. The defense just got a fourth down stop at their own 10-yard line, and the Bearcats will take over. Desmond Ritter having a day. Two touchdown passes, one touchdown run thus far for the junior quarterback from Louisville who has led Cincinnati to a 26-4 record in the games where he's taken most of the snaps at quarterback. Got his work cut out for him here. Ball at Cincinnati with the ball at their own 10. 
Nice little 90-yard drive here would be wonderful. He had 91-yard run last week to tie the school record set by Joe Miller back in 1953. First and 10 cats from the 10, ball on the right hash. Ritter waiting for a gun snap. He has the ball, hands it off to Jared Dokes. Not much running room, so Dokes goes low and picks up a couple. Yeah, not much at all there, and I'm not, not surprised at all. The Bearcats come out running the ball here. They threw the ball so well in the first half, but back against your goal line here, not quite against your goal line, but at your own 10-yard line, you're going to be cautious. And Dokes now with uh, nine carries, Young and Jackson, 38 yards. Young and Jackson go out to the left. Jordan Jones out to the right. Second and eight Cincinnati. The Cats at their own 12. Tight end Leonard Taylor motions to the left. Cincinnati runs it to the right. And Jared Dokes is hopped on at the 17-yard line. He picked up five, third down and three coming up. Now the Bearcats in the first half, only two out of six on third downs. They're much better than that into the year. They're at 50% as well, only 33% in the first half. Bearcats trying to avoid it, three and out inside their own 20. Third down and three from the 17-yard line. Ritter claps the hands, waits for the snap from freshman Jake Renfro. Now Dez walks up toward the O-line as he barks out instructions, looking toward the sideline for hand signals. Play clock down to seven. Riz, uh, Ritter backs up into the gun, five yards behind the line. Desmond has the ball. He'll look to pass. His throw, back shoulder throw. Jones trying to reel it in. He's got it for a first down at the 28-yard line. Well done. Back shoulder all the way. Just a great throw. Cincinnati will get to the line quickly here make sure this one's not looked at but nice job very nice job of catching the ball by Jordan Jones second catch of the day for him first and 10 Cincinnati at the 28 yard line clock running with 935 left third quarter 21 10 UC is the score out of a pistol formation Ritter turns left hands it off to Dokes had a little bit of a seam mm. open up but he could not squirt through as he was pulled down by Xavier Cullens after a three-yard game. Yeah, Collins got him around the ankle. He gets out of that. He's still running, not maybe not still running now, but he would have run for very close to the first down. And back to the Ritter pass to Jones. He got that out so fast. Memphis had sent a blitz. They had backed off the blitz for most of the first half, but that time they sent six, and Ritter got it out of there very quick to Jones. Two by two formation. Tight end Josh Wiley motions, lines up as a wing to the left. Cincinnati fakes a handoff. Ritter throws, caught by Wiley. All sorts of running room to the 40, the 44. And he gets dragged out of bounds after a first down pickup by safety Tyrez Lindsey. We've heard Luke Fickle say, we got to figure out ways to get the ball to Trey Tucker. They also got to figure out ways to get the ball down the field to Josh Wiley. He is a weapon. And that was a nicely, nicely executed play by the Cincinnati offense. Ritter, very good. Wiley, very good. Got some blocking out there. Nicely done. 13 yards to the tight end. Four catches, 46 yards for Josh Wiley, the LaSalle product. It's first and 10 Bearcats from the 44. Play action fake. Ritter fires deep down the middle of the field. Jay Sean Jackson reaches over the right shoulder and pulls it in for a huge gain. His momentum brings him down at the Memphis 11-yard line. I have to tell you, that ball, when you first saw it, and as it got about halfway to Jackson, you're thinking, okay, there's another one overthrown. Jay Sean Jackson did exactly what you needed to do. He kept his arms moving so that he could pick up that extra three to four to five to six inches and extend it totally for it makes the catch. 45 yards down to the Memphis 11. It is first and 10 from there. Ritter with a zone read handoff and Jerome Ford muscles his way down to the seven for a four yard gain. The Bearcats have once again entered the Toyota red zone. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com for all Toyota offers. Toyota, let's go places. And those are the ball just outside the seven. Three receivers left, including the big tight end, Leonard Taylor, had a touchdown catch against Memphis last year, the first of his career. Second and six from the Memphis seven. Cincinnati trying to add to an 11-point lead. Bach running with 7-12 left in the third quarter. Ritter appears to be changing the play as he marches up to the line, says something to his O lineman catches the shotgun snap, hands it off to Dokes, tackled for a loss. Yep. Saw the, down at the nine. Saw the box stack that time, and I'm not sure if they thought Memphis was going to pull out of there. Dokes had some success earlier in the first half on that same play to where he was able to get through the seven-man front, 
Not, not this time. Memphis all over that run. Tackle made by nose tackle O'Brien Goodson, the biggest player in the country with the uniform number one. 297 pounds. It looks unusual on a number one. Third down and eight from the nine. Ritter looking to pass, now scrambling, sprinting toward the left. Great ball fake. He's at the five. He's to the pylon. Touchdown, Bearcats. Good thing he didn't throw it. We had an official take his hat off out there, meaning that the receiver was out of bounds. Um, but Ritter didn't throw the football, so doesn't matter. Nicely done. Touchdown number four that Desmond Ritter has had a hand in today. Two passing, two running. And the Bearcat lead is 27 to 10, pending the extra point after a 90-yard touchdown drive. Sophomore kicker Cole Smith is ready. Senior James Smith, no relation, will hold. The snap, the swing of the leg, the kick. And the high end over end kick is good. 28 to 10, Break. UC. And we'll take a timeout. 623 left in the third quarter. The Bearcat lead is 18 points. This is Bearcat football presented by RL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. Some different coverages, confuse the quarterback, come up with a big turnover for the Bearcats. Have fun with that, Brady White. <laughs> as the sorcerer reaches into his bag of tricks. As for Desmond Ritter, he's now 19 for 23 today. That's 83%, including a couple of deep balls, one for a touchdown from 43 yards out to Alec Pierce. And on that 90-yard touchdown drive, half of it came on a 45-yard throw to Jay Sean Jackson. Yeah, he's he's playing really well. And, and obviously, the decision there to scramble on that touchdown uh, and then to get to the end zone did, did a really nice job of eluding the tackler one-on-one -on -one out there and made, it, made that guy look silly and got to the end zone. And what a swing, Dan, from where Memphis is down at their at the Cincinnati 10-yard line, ready to go in and make this a one-score game. The defense holds on fourth and two or fourth and three that was two two yep. and um, to take it 90 yards the other way that's a huge swing and as Tony said credit to Mike Denbrock and his Cincinnati offense I mean at the same time it doesn't happen if the defense doesn't get a fourth down stop either so do you think Brady White is kicking himself yes. for the feet first slide when he could have run for a first down and instead went to the slide and set up fourth and two yeah I mean there's ways to take a hit and not take the direct you know all the all the the force of it and he didn't do that this kickoff fielded at the nine yard line Memphis sprinting it back across the 30 and out to the 32 Taj Washington with with the return he was the guy that had 
a 92 yard score on a screen pass early in the game. Yeah, interesting on that kick. Very, very short. I don't know if that was by design or whether uh, Cole Smith just didn't get all of it. You know, he had kicked it out of bounds on the previous kickoff, yep. so it may have been by design, and the design wasn't so good <laughs> as uh, Memphis has it at the 32 yard line. Yeah, that's not quite kicking it out of bounds where it would have been at the 35, but still good start, good uh, drive start for Memphis. Memphis will come out with their number two running back in there. Kylan Watkins, the transfer from UT Martin. Rodriguez Clark has been shut down today on first and 10 from the 32. Brady White swings it out to that running back being pursued by Jarrell White, who leverages him toward the sideline. Shoves him out of bounds at the 35 after a three-yard pick. Yeah, nice job by, by White. But Watkins did a good job there, too. Kind of made it look like he was going to cut up the field, kicked it back to the outside. That made White just hesitate a little bit to allow that three-yard gain to take place. At least right now, it doesn't feel like another double-digit tackle day for Jarrell White, who has been so good this year, averaging 11 tackles per game, number one of the conference. On second and seven, Memphis fakes a... Same jet, play. Jet sweep and then throws it to Watkins. Watkins running up the far sideline. He'll pick up the first down. Gets tackled at the 42 of Cincinnati. Yeah, same play, that little wheel route. Again, Gardner follows the guy in, and I'm not saying that that's not what he's supposed to do. The out receiver, in this case, Austin, comes on a slant route, and Gardner, Ahmad Gardner, follows him in, and that leaves that left flat wide open. First and 10 at the Bearcat 42. Here's a handoff to Watkins, and Malik Van is in the backfield to tackle him for a two-yard loss. Yeah, again, the run not producing much for Memphis right now. The Bearcats shutting it down big time. And I think going back to Tony's point, after the Cincinnati touchdown, Memphis is going to have to throw the ball right now as we get down to five minutes to go here in the third quarter. I want to make a point after this play about the depth of the Bearcats' defense up front second and 12 white back to throw his slant caught by austin tackled immediately by kobe bryant at the 39 yard line a gain of five the third down and seven cincinnati rotates so many fresh bodies in on the defensive line and there's no drop off no no they ethan tucky malik van they're in there right now those guys would start just about any team in college football Third down and seven for the Tigers. Cincinnati sends five. White has time, floats it downfield. It is incomplete. Intended for Javon Ivory. It is fourth and seven. Brady White staying on the field for now. Yeah, I was going to say it'd be a 56 yarder, 55 yarder field goal if they attempted it, and they are not. And Wiggins did a good job there of making sure that ball wasn't caught by anybody. By Jay Sanders checks in. So he'll be going after Brady White as Malik Van trots off. Elijah Ponder also checked into the game. Fourth down and seven play coming up for Memphis. 4-14 left in the third quarter. Brady White is ready. Three receivers left, one out to the right. He's back to throw, looking right, looks back to the left, sacked back at the 45-yard line. My Jay Sanders. Came off the edge, left tackle, never had a chance. And now we get flags. We got a little bit, but it's an after the... After the play flag, it's a dead ball foul. I don't know if it's on Cincinnati or Memphis. Both teams consoling guys and um, players. So we'll see what the call is. Or is it one of those ones? We need to settle this down. Let's call it on both teams. We'll see. Luke Fickle out there trying to get an explanation as well. Here comes the call. Maybe. Result of the play. As the series ends, it goes over on down to Cincinnati after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offensive at 56. 15-yard penalty will be added at the end of the run. First down, Cincinnati. The right tackle, Dylan Parham, probably frustrated after his quarterback got sacked on a fourth down try. Right. And Bearcats are going to have the ball in Memphis territory as a result. So we've seen edge rushers, Dan. You, 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 Miles Garrett comes to mind. Um, uh, oh, shoot, what's the guy's name out at L.A.? Uh, Donald, Aaron Donald. Those guys that have such a quick start around the edge, that is what Sanders did that time. Tackle, who's out there with him, Sanders gets out a little wider. He can't even get a hand on it. 
and, and my Jay Sanders makes the sack. Averaging about a sack per game, we have a timeout. 4-10 left in the third. The Bearcats will have it at the Memphis 40. When we come back, leading 28-10, to 10, it's Bearcat football presented by r &L Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. <laughs> Cincinnati trying to get a couple of wins this weekend over teams from Tennessee. Right now the Bearcats lead the Memphis Tigers 28 to 10, 410 left in the third quarter. Bearcats will try to knock off the 5 and 1 Tennessee Titans tomorrow afternoon. MyJ Sanders with that sack, sack and a half in the game today for um, MyJ that ties his career high. Gives him five sacks in five games this season. Yes sir. 225 pounds when he arrived at UC. He's now listed at 6'5", 258, <laughs> and growing on his way to playing in the NFL yes. at some point. Yes, he will be. He, he is so quick off the edge. Criticized him a little bit earlier for uh, not watching the football and getting a couple of offside penalties, uh, but that's why he's effective. He can just fly off that edge, and, and honestly, that's exactly what happened there. And um, Left tackle had no chance of even getting a hand on him that time. And the left tackle is good. Opina Eze is Eze, considered yep. an NFL prospect. First and 10 Bearcats at the 40 yard line of Memphis. It is 28 to 10 UC, third quarter, 410 left. Ritter in the gun, two touchdown passes, two touchdown runs for the Bearcats junior quarterback. Jared Dokes in the backfield off the right hip of Desmond Ritter. He's ready for the snap. It's a run to the left for Dokes. Stiff arm to break away from a tackle near the line of scrimmage. And Dokes runs to the 31 for a nine-yard pickup. How about that? Nine yards on first down. Ran away from a safety blitz coming in from the boundaries. Or I'm sorry, the, uh, the field side. And great call that time. A little bit of luck sometimes when you do that. And Dokes does a great job there. And now you got a second and one. So... Your entire playbook's available to you. Linebacker Thomas Pickens got shoot away with a stiff arm. It is second down and one Cincinnati from the 31 yard line. Two receivers right, one left. Doak shifts from the quarterback's left to his right. Ball on the left hash. Cincinnati runs toward the short side of the field and Dokes didn't get much, but he got the first down. He's tackled at the 30 yard line. Yeah, again, they brought the guy, um, backer, kind of the hybrid linebacker, the fifth guy. You're, your nickel guy brought him off the edge that time again to the field side. Bearcats opt to go back to the boundary side two times in a row. In this case, Dokes doesn't get much, but he gets the first down. That's all you needed was one yard. 14 carries, 54 yards for Jared Dokes. He's topped 100 each of the last two weeks. Got there last week with a 35-yard touchdown run late in the game. Finished with 105 against SMU. First and 10 Bearcats from the 30 of Memphis. Jet motion by Tucker. They toss it forward to him. Trey Tucker 
man, he can move. He picks up 11 down to the 19-yard line as the Bearcats enter the Toyota Red Zone. See, normally when you see a little guy with speed like that, they go to the edge, and the first thing they want to do is go as wide as they can because they can outrun people. Not Tucker. He takes that ball back up inside, sheds a block, a tackler, and picks up another first down. First and 10 at the 19-yard line of the Memphis Tigers. Two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Wide receiver Jordan Jones goes in motion, lines up to the right. Michael Young out to the left, double tight ends in, in a pistol formation. Taylor to the left, Wiley to the right. Desmond Ritter hands it off to Jared Dokes. He will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Jaleel Clum uh, Clemens has him in a bear hug and tackles him for a one-yard loss. Yeah, you could see Memphis on that bringing their guys up, and it was like, okay, this run-in is, even though Trey Tucker's, Last 12-yard or 11-yard carry was a pass. It was like a run, and they're saying Cincinnati's just trying to run the time off the clock right now. We're going to gamble that they're going to run the ball. They guessed right on that one. Clock running, 142 left in the third. Second and 12 officially at the 21 of Memphis. Three receivers spread out to the wide side left. Ritter back to throw, bouncing in the pocket. Floats it toward the end zone. Tucker wide open. Touchdown, Bearcats! So it was a different formation and obviously a wide receiver in Trey Tucker, but very similar to the play that Memphis has been able to uh, complete two times on Cincinnati where they wheel a running back out of the backfield. In this case, Tucker, he wasn't in the backfield. He came across, but they lost containment there, chased a wide receiver across the field, and that left Tucker all alone by himself in the end zone. Third touchdown of the year for Trey Tucker, including his kickoff return touchdown. The Bearcat lead is 34 to 10, and here's Cole Smith looking to tack on the extra point. The snap, the put down, the kick. Keep it. Yes, sir. A 21-yard touchdown pass from Desmond Ritter to Trey Tucker. No defender within five yards when Tucker caught it at the goal line. Desmond Ritter now with 271 passing yards and three throwing touchdowns in this game to go with his two touchdown runs. Yeah. Tucker was actually, it was a, it was trips to that side, three receivers to the, to the field side, to the left side, and Tucker was the inside guy. And all he did was just literally a wheel route, just kind of came out to the sideline, ran up the field. And the other two guys both did um, long slants slash uh, quick posts and the defenders followed him in there, and that left Tucker wide open. And, and Ritter didn't really have to do anything but make sure he kept the ball in bounds there for Trey Tucker to catch it. Back-to-back -back scoring drives for Cincinnati. 35-10 is the Bearcat lead, biggest lead of the day. Cats are uh, four for four in the red zone today. Here comes Cole Smith's kickoff, tries to kick it deep this time and succeeds. Bounces about two yards deep in the end zone. Rodriguez Clark elected not to catch it. It will be a touchback. So I'll bring this up one more time. In the Memphis UCF game, the score is almost identical to what it is right now. It's 35 to 10 here. In that game, Memphis trailed 35 to 14, roughly same point of the game, and the Tigers came back to win. So with their offense, not coffin nails yet. No, but you like Cincinnati's chances the way the defense is playing. That's for sure. This is a key drive for Memphis. Got to figure the running game is about over for Memphis. Down by 25, late third quarter. Brady White ready for the shotgun snap, has a glove on the left hand, catches, drops back to throw, cocks the arm, his pass caught. Crossing route, Calvin Austin with tra track sprinter speed breaks out of an ankle tackle, and the Bearcats will eventually chase him out of bounds way downfield. He goes out at the Cincinnati 31, 44 yards, and a quick crossing route over the middle. Wow, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Not a long pass again, very similar in a different direction, but similar to the one that went for 92 yards and a touchdown. Just not a long pass, let the guy run with it afterwards. Five catches, 91 yards for... Calvin Austin, who was a second-team All-American in track from the 31. It's a handoff to Rodriguez Clark, and he'll be pulled down by MyJ Sanders after a two-yard run. Well, I know, again, the sacks count as negative rushing yardage, but I would agree with you, Dan. Why is Memphis running the ball? They have 16 yards on the day on the ground. 
And 267 through the air, yep. including a 92-yard screen pass touchdown. 31 seconds left in the third quarter. The Cats have a 25-point lead. Two claps by Brady White, catches the snap, pump fakes, now throws over the middle. It is caught by Austin again as he snuck behind Jarrell White and gets tackled at the 23, a couple yards short of the first down. Yep, going to be a, a third down, and Memphis gets to the line quickly. Can they get this off in 10 seconds before the quarter runs out? Changing personnel, that's going to make it tough. Yeah, We're down to tough. four seconds to go. Yeah, they'll give it a chance to talk about it. So the third quarter comes to an end. The score is Cincinnati 35, Memphis 10. You're listening to Bearcat Football presented by RNL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. Key Bank. Halloween 2020 in Cincinnati. The Bearcats lead the Memphis Tigers 35 to 10. Before we go to the fourth quarter, we go down to Tony Pike. There's a lot to be said about how a football team carries themselves. And this past week on Bearcat Insider, Dan, you asked Coach Fickle about the 126 penalty yards. And while he was disappointed in some, some also come because that's how this team plays. They play aggressive, they play fast. Saw the 92 yard touchdown. Uh, catch earlier for Memphis. We see that long burst play there at the end of the third. That's because this defense continues to play aggressive. They're okay with giving up penalties or giving up some yardage because of that aggressiveness, and that has carried over. You see it the way this defense carries themselves, and now, for the first time in a while, you're starting to see that from the offense. A good rhythm from Coach Denbrock. Des Ritter looks poised in the pocket. We talked about him and his footwork early on. He looks fantastic from a fundamental point. So everything rolling right now for the Bearcats. We want to see him finish out a strong fourth quarter. And only four penalties so far for UC today after the double digits that Tony referred to last week. Yeah, they've done a good job. There's a couple of those that have been, you know, like well, at least one of them, a skirmish between two guys on the field and the Bearcats not retaliating and getting caught in that. So. It's clearly four down territory here at third and two. If, they, if Memphis fails to make it on this, they will go for it on fourth and two. So far in the uh, second half here on third downs, one out of three for Memphis. So again, 33% on the day. Once again, here at Nippert Stadium, the crowd consists of direct family members of the players for both teams, in addition to the band, the cheerleaders, and the dance squad. Of course, in Cincinnati's case, just from the coaches' kids, you can have a decent crowd. <laughs> Luke Fickle has six. Marcus Freeman has six. And I'm sure the Ficken, uh, Fickle and Freeman kids are enjoying it today with the Bearcats leading by 25 with 15 minutes left. Long 15 minutes, though, with Memphis offense on the field. Fourth quarter will begin with the Tigers at the Cincinnati 23-yard line. Third down and two coming up. Brady White's put it in the air 25 times. He's 14 for 25, 273 yards, one touchdown, no picks. 
Feels strange to see a game where Cincinnati does not have an interception yet. As incredible as the secondary has been so far this year. On third and two, it's a running play to Rodriguez Clark. Forget that, he gets a yard but did not get the first down. Jarrell White involved after the play, a little pushing and shoving with six foot seven inch tight end Cameron Wilson. No yeah. penalty flag, it's fourth and one. Nice attempt at a flop there by Wilson as uh, White shoved him. First time I've seen White under center on that previous play. And now it's a wildcat for Memphis as they're gonna snap it directly to running back Rodriguez Clark. Brady White is a slot receiver out to the right. Cincinnati will call a timeout. See if Memphis opts to change things back to having Brady White back there in the shotgun or they stay with that. I like Cincinnati's chances if it, if it stays that way and they don't throw the ball. Although certainly Rodriguez Clark, he can throw the ball as well, I'm sure. The Bearcat defensive line has shoved Memphis's offensive line around today. Yes, they have. So if they run it out of the Wildcat on fourth and one, I wouldn't be overly confident if I uh, were Memphis head coach Ryan Silverfield. They're staying with it. So White lines up as one of the wide receivers out to the right. They've got that big defensive lineman, Joseph Dorsius, in the backfield like a fullback as they get ready to snap it directly to the running back, Rodriguez. Clark, Clark. I don't think so. near the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got it. I don't think so. Tried to run it behind the defensive lineman, serving as a fullback. Cincinnati got to Rodriguez Clark very quickly. Yeah, and I, I, like, I like what's going on out there. Cincinnati not allowing any penalty and trash talking to take place, pulling each other away. They're going to measure. That was Jarrell White who came from the edge to make the tackle unblocked on Rodriguez Clark. And he did not get it. They do not even measure. They don't even the measure. That offense will take over. Man, you can tell you got an offensive line coach as a head coach on the other sideline in Memphis because that, both those calls, very bold, but uh, not very, not very efficient. And again, the Cincinnati defense just does their job. They've done, they've done that all year so far through four and a half, four and three quarters games. So the Bearcats have come up with back-to-back -back fourth and short stops to give the ball back to the offense with a big lead. Here's a handoff to Jerome Ford, and Ford will get tackled after a one-yard pickup, trying to sweep it around the left. Redshirt freshman linebacker Cole Mashburn on the tackle for Memphis. Yeah, not much there, and, and Memphis is going to play the run, and if you're Cincinnati, you know, you, you're up, you've got a three-score lead, but at the same time, you want to certainly take some clock off, not to mention, be nice to score again. Two true freshman wide receivers are in. Jaden Thompson and Tyler Scott both have blazing speed. They're both out to the right. Second down and nine for the Cats. Cincinnati at the 23. It's a running play and a big hole opens up for Jerome Ford as he pirouettes and spins out to the 34 yard line for an 11 yard game. Well, there you go. That's what you want right there. And every time you get a first down, you can take a few minutes off the clock. Ford leaves. Jared Dokes is back in. And Cincinnati will be very patient with a 35 to 10 lead, yes, 13 and a half will. minutes to go. Play clock is at 18. The Bearcats line up in a pistol. No need to snap it quickly. Two receivers right, one out to the left. Play clock at 10. Now the Bearcats are ready to go on offense. Desmond Ritter drops straight back to throw. He's going to launch one deep downfield, and it is intercepted at the Memphis 20-yard line. It's the last thing you needed right there. I'm very surprised that the Bearcats opted to throw. Tried to go deep. You mentioned Tyler Scott and that speed. That's exactly who the target was. I take that back. It was Jaden Thompson. My bad. And the interception goes to Jacoby Break. Francis. He had an INT off Ben Bryant last year in the final regular season game between these two teams. He had inside position there on the freshman Jaden Thompson and intercepted the deep ball to give Memphis the ball back at the 20-yard line. We have a timeout, 13.07 left, 35 to 10. Cincinnati is the score. This is Bearcat football presented by r &L Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW.
more than one game. They were still undefeated, including three 6-0 teams, Clemson, BYU, and Liberty. The 5-0 teams include Alabama, Notre Dame, Marshall, and Coastal Carolina. And you had a couple of 4-0 teams, Cincinnati and Oklahoma State. Yeah, it is a little different this year, isn't it? As far as keeping up with how many games people are playing and how many they have played. And it's definitely different, but um, Bearcats happy to be at 4-0, would love to be at 5-0, and are on their way. The interception there didn't happen, or didn't uh, help, rather. Um, Bearcats definitely going for the, for the throat there. Clemson ranked first in the country, playing without the best quarterback in the country, Trevor Lawrence today and losing by two points to Boston College late third quarter. Yeah, Boston College, to 26. certainly not the team they were last year. They're very, very much improved. First and 10, Memphis after the interception by Jacoby Francis, his second of the year. Tigers have it at their own 20-yard line. Brady Wright catches a low snap, fakes a handoff, throws a slant, incomplete, intended for Austin. Kobe Bryant there in coverage, penalty flag down. Got too many guys who are ineligible, not, not ineligible, but uh, formation situation for Memphis. That'll back them up five yards, I believe. I don't think the Bearcats can decline it. We'll see. Ineligible player downfield, okay. offense number 67. The penalty is declined, second down. All right, that's the center, Manuel Arona Lopez, who is on a team in high school I've never heard of before. The high school firefighting team in Phoenix. Second down and 10. Brady White looking left, looks over the middle, short pass, bobbled and Ooh. incomplete. He handcuffed the intended receiver, Taj Washington, with a hard throw just about a yard or two downfield. Bounced way up into the air like it was a geyser yeah. and then fell incomplete. But I, getting back to the firefighting team. Yes, sir. Apparently they, they practice, you know, in fire gear and they have competitions, and apparently he was the star in the dummy dragging event. This is a true story. Practicing carrying like a 150-pound yeah. a dummy to safety. Right. Those aren't just stuffed with foam. Those are, there's a lot of weight there to carry them, make it look like a real body, feel pretty, like a real body. Yeah, pretty cool concept. And he wants to be a firefighter when he's done playing football. Third down and 10, Brady White being chased, backing up, being chased again. Now throws off his back foot, incomplete intended for Taj Washington, and that's a three and out for the Bearcat defense. Yeah, absolutely great job there by Jabari Taylor also. You mentioned the depth of defensive line, Dan. There's a guy we haven't talked about today who really makes his presence known, Jabari Taylor, and he rushed, he, two guys had rushed Brady White, he eluded both of them, and Jabari Taylor was out there, made him throw that ball high and away, and not only that, had an opportunity to hit Brady White, and didn't do it and pick up a penalty. So nice job by Jabari Taylor. So the interception does not appear to hurt. Three straight incompletions for Brady White. Here comes the punt from Williams. Gets it off, has some hang time for the first time all day. And Montgomery running toward the far sideline makes a fair catch at the 32, a 48 yard punt with no return. We got 12.42 to go, and the Bearcats have the ball back with a 25-point lead. Well, decent field position to start this drive for the Bearcats. They're on 32, I think, is where it is. Yep, exactly. And you think you'll see them try to concentrate on running the ball, but pass when they have an opportunity. Not necessarily go deep like they did last time, where they uh, tried a, a shot down the field to Jaden Thompson that was intercepted. But the day that Desmond Ritter's having, take away that exception has been good. I would have I would have every confidence in the world to throw the ball if I need to. First and 10, you see at the 32, ball on the left hash, 12-42 left, 35-10, Cincinnati. Ritter in the gun with Dokes to his right. Dez has the ball, sticks it in the belly of Jared Dokes, following his right tackle for a big gain. He's all the way out to midfield as Cincinnati opened up a big hole in that right tackle that I referred to. Darius Harper came up limping a little bit, but he's jogging toward the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they're wearing the Memphis defensive line down. Big defensive line, a good defensive line. This offensive line playing very well. 
very well. And isn't it interesting, we talked about depth early in the game, how because some folks weren't able to play at the offensive line that you get new guys in there. Now you've got some really, you, you've created some depth at O-line. O Biggest run of the day for Jared Dokes. It went for 19. He's up to 71 rushing yards in the game. From the Memphis 49, they give it to Dokes again, picking and choosing, trying to find a hole, gets shoved from behind by his offensive line and they propel him down to the 45 for a four-yard gain. Yeah, it was a two-yard gain, and all of a sudden it became a four-yard gain. As we've be been accustomed to see now where offensive line will get in behind him, he's held stalemated, kind of stood right up. They'll get in behind and push, and that netted two additional yards. Jake Renfro's gone the distance at center today. We were told that Jakari Robinson would play at some point. I've not seen him out there. Jake Ren Renfro a little bit bigger than Jakari Robinson, and the offense is thriving with this new interior uh, package of Renfro at center and O'Quinn at left guard. Here's a run to the right for Dokes. Gets stopped at the 43. Picked up a couple, third down and four coming up. Somebody lost a helmet. That would be Hudson. So the Bearcats will have to change left tackle. Lorenz Metz. Hudson will be out for at least one play. The so big, the German giant, the Lorenz German, Metz, 6'9", yep. 335, checks in. Started 13 games last year at right tackle, still only a sophomore. Third down and four coming up. Here's a spot where you might want to throw the ball. Three receivers left, including Wiley, who now motions toward the formation. And lines up in the slot to the right. Ritter back to throw. Looks to take off and run, but it will not work. He gets stopped by Morris Joseph behind the line of scrimmage. That'll go as a sack, and it's fourth and four. Yeah, it sure will. Ritter was going for Wiley. Kept his eyes on him and tried to come up into there, and then once he realized that, he started to run. And in this particular case, just didn't do anything stupid with the football, so don't like the fact that it was a sack, but... No turnover. Now you got one of the best punters in the country out here to put the ball without question somewhere inside the 10 again. Looking for his third inside the 10 punt of the day. Shoulder high snap, nose of the ball down, end over end spinning punt, fair caught at the nine. Clockwork, isn't it? Unbelievable. 36 money. yards. Money, money, money. Nose of the ball placed at the 10. We have a timeout with 9.47 left. Cincinnati 35, Memphis 10. This is Bearcat Football presented by RL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. Thirty-five, Memphis 10, 9.47 to go. They just read a promo over the PA system here at Nippert Stadium. Fighting fans to stay tuned after the game for the post-game show. They mentioned my name. They mentioned yours. Then they mentioned Bearcats legend Tony Pike. <laughs> Deserving 
of the term legend as we go down to Tony on the sideline. That cost me most of what I make during the week <laughs> to get that set each game. Uh, for this defense and, and what it does by imposing its will on opposing teams and opposing players, Brady White is a very good quarterback, and you've seen the last three or four possessions. He is now scattered in the backfield. His feet aren't under him. He's getting the ball out before he wants to. He's missing with accuracy, normally throws that Brady White makes. That is not Brady White just having a random off day. That is the pressure that he's been under, both physically and mentally, with so many different looks that he has to process and getting hit so much today. The Bearcats defense at this point of the game really imposing their will. Excellent point, Tony. Three yeah. possessions for Memphis, no points in the second half. Brady White, top recruit when he started out at Arizona State. He was considered the top recruit in Arizona State history. Yeah. Came in at 65% completion percentage. He's 14 out of 28 on the day, right at 50%. So the Bearcats done a great job. He threw 109 touchdown passes in high school. On first and 10, White drops straight back to throw, moves up in the pocket, throws over the middle off the fingertips of the intended receiver. Six foot seven inch tight end, Cameron Wilson, landed on the turf. Bearcats secondary upset with themselves that they couldn't pick off the ricochet. Yeah, they were too close to him, and it's the second one that sailed through a receiver's hands. First time it's gone through the hands of Cameron Wilson. He is a big specimen. Second and 10 from the 10 for Memphis. The incomplete pass stopped the clock with 9.42 to go. White back to throw again. Short pass, incomplete. About three yards downfield. And it is third and ten. That was intended for running back Marquavius Weaver. Yeah, that was that wheel route again. And uh, Bearcats got caught twice. Once for a lot of yardage, once for a good amount of yardage. The last two times, nothing. Well done, well covered. Kobe Bryant stayed home. And to Tony's point, that... Forced, that forced Brady White to, to throw the ball badly. I.J. Sanders has one and a half sacks so far. He lines up left edge, the only person over on that side. Three guys bunch tightly together on the other side. White back to throw. He was held. Now scrambling, throws. It is caught for a first down by Taj Washington. Nice tackle made in the open field by Kobe Bryant, but it's a 12-yard gain and a first down. Yeah, it sure was. My J. Sanders, I watched him the whole way, and he got off the edge. Running back was there to help if needed, but the tackle pushed him around. It looked like he was being held. First and 10 from the 22 out of a pistol. White fakes a handoff, has some time, throws. Caught by Austin over the middle of the field. He's at the 40, the 45. Javon Hicks pushes him down at the 46. And they're moving quickly now in big chunks, Memphis is. And no, they're, they're, they're able to do this. I mean, this is what they do. 24 yards to Austin, who has seven catches for 121. He's become the number one target after DeMonte Coxey opted out after the second game of the year. First and 10 from the 46, Brady White back to pass again, moves up in the pocket, scrambling left, throws, and it is incomplete. Javon Hicks with good coverage on Taj Washington. They sure did. Nice job that time. Again, made Brady White feel uncomfortable in there. He had to bail out of the pocket and tried to throw on the run while rolling left and that's not his strength. Tony made that point a while ago. He, they're, they're getting him to throw out of strange kind of angles and he was rolling left that time trying to throw left and not the easiest thing in the world to do to be accurate. 309 passing yards for White but Memphis only has 18 rushing yards in this game. On second and 10, White throws. It is caught in Bearcat territory at the 47. Kobe Bryant will wrestle down Jeremy Tate after his first catch of the year, and it's third down and three. Very makeable third down. You like it if you're Memphis, third and short. What are my chances? But they're having to throw the ball, so anything can happen. Third and three at the Bearcat, 47, 8.16 to go. Low snap handled by White in trouble. Fumble. Ball's knocked away. It's scooped up by Ty Van Fossen, and the Bearcats will take over. Now they even up that turnover takeaway ratio today. They gave the ball up on an interception. Nice job by Van Fossen. James Absolutely. Wiggins. Wiggins. James Wiggins forced it. Van Fossen recovered it. And Cincinnati comes up with a takeaway at the Memphis 33-yard yeah, line. Yeah, nicely done. Man, Wiggins on a safety blitz, got up there. Looked like he was going to be able to sack White. And um, 
just instead of that, he just ripped the ball away, and that put the ball on the turf. Van Fossen right there to pick it up. Looked like he was going to scoop and score, but he fell down as he picked the ball up. They've got the celebratory basketball hoop ready behind the bench for the slam dunk after the defense came up with a takeaway. The offense is ready on first and 10 at the 33-yard line of Memphis. Out of a pistol, Ritter hands it off. Jerome Ford breaking through into the secondary. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Bearcats! As Jerome Ford races in from 33 yards out after the Bearcat defense took the ball away. How about that? You know, you think about, okay, sudden change after the turnover. Do we take the ball up and try for a touch? You know, try to take one over the top? Nope, let's just hand the ball off, do, do what we do well, and... Um, Ford takes it the distance. How about that? 8.02 to go, and Cincinnati's on the verge of having a 32-point lead over a team that was not in the top 25, but only missed by one spot. Memphis was 26th, if you counted up the other teams receiving votes in the AP poll. The kick is up. It is good. And it's 42-10. to 10. Break. Cincinnati will take a timeout with 8.02 left. Cincinnati's lead is 32 points, and this is Bearcat Football presented by RL Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW. country at the time, Army. They have a 29-point win over a team that was ranked number 16 at the time, SMU. That's the most lopsided game in college football this year, where the losing team was ranked. And today, they've opened up a 32-point lead over a team that was one spot outside of the top 25. So for a team outside of the Power Five to qualify for the four-team playoff at the end of the year. Number one, you have to go undefeated. Right. Cincinnati still has a long way to go to get there. But you also have to have impressive victories when you play good teams. And the Bearcats are closing in on their third in their first five games. Yeah. And you mentioned Memphis 26, Dan. You know, I realize that's when you look at pull up the top 25, you see those teams at the bottom also receiving votes. But they're right there. I mean, so. And, and they were three and one in their only loss, of course, coming to SMU, who was a ranked team as well. So not to mention they knocked off UCF, that 50-49 game we've alluded to a couple of times today. I mean, this is 42 to 10, which is lopsided. And Memphis's only touchdown yeah. was something of a fluke, a screen pass that went for a 92-yard yeah, score. Exactly. Now again, it's not over. Eight minutes, they can score, and they're not gonna they're not gonna roll over. But Cincinnati could score again too. Running game starting to get cranked up for the Bearcats. 175 yards on the ground now for the Bearcats. 271 through the air. They pride themselves on balance, and 
not surprised that there's more passing yards today because Memphis, we've talked about it a couple of times, giving up 440 yards a game. Total yards 446 for Cincinnati, 314 for Memphis. This kickoff will be fielded by Rodriguez Clark with a head of steam at the eight, trying to get to the far sideline. Tackled near the 25. There's a late penalty flag. Yeah, we'll see what it is. It came in very late away from the tackle, so nothing like a face mask or anything like that. See if it was usually on a, on a kick, you get a hold or a block in the back or something like that, but this one was so far away from the ball, it could be anything. The tackle was made by a true freshman running back, Ethan White, who's had some impressive moments at training camp and in practice. They waved that penalty off. Be first down in 10 for Memphis from their what, 26. You are correct. 7.57 on the clock. Make it to 27. 42 to 10, Cincinnati to score. Bearcats have some subs in the game on defense. Justin Harris in at corner. Taj Ward in at a corner spot. Here's a run to the right. Now Watkins cuts it back to the left. Brady White running out there as if to block, and then he shied away. Tackle made at the 32-yard line after a five-yard run for Kylan Watkins. Yeah, nice job of closing in on him. Brian Cook in the secondary. He's played a, a good bit today, but he's out there now. You mentioned Taj Ward, who's also been in there today because of the injury to Anquan Bush. Todd Bumpus in at cornerback for Cincinnati. First time we've called that name this year. Second down, looked like the Bearcats jumped early, free play, so Memphis throws it long, and it is picked off, one-handed interception by Javon Hicks. I don't think it's going to count. It won't. Bearcats jumped off sides. Memphis will get another play. That'll give them a first down as well. Also got a penalty. Well, that's, yeah, that's the offside penalty. I thought it was a second flag there, but nope. Javon led the conference in interceptions a year ago with five. That would have been spectacular. A one-handed, left-handed pick. He's frustrated because it doesn't count. Yeah. Jabari Taylor, the guilty party that time, so on the interior. That'll give Memphis a first and ten. Not a great throw by Brady White on that one that was picked off. Of course, it won't count. Good but news for Javon is they can still show the video and highlight films and yes, stuff like that can. at the end of the year. First and 10 at the 38 after the five yard penalty. White against the blitz, checks it down to the running back Watkins and he's smashed to the ground by Brian Cook at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Cook. He reacted perfectly to where the pass was. Not a chance of gaining a yard after contact there. It'll go as a no gain. 6.47 to go with the clock running. Second and 10 for the Tigers. Brady White back to pass yet again. Moves up in the pocket, bounces out to the left. And he's pulled down for a sack. A one-yard sack on the play. He's tackled Jabari by Jabari Taylor. Jabari Taylor. Could see the nine, but had to make sure that he turned and got to see that zero. So he's played a well of a football game other than that offsides penalty he just had. Five sacks today for the Bearcat defense. Third down and 11 now for the Tigers. 6.09 on the clock. The Cincinnati lead is 32 points. Bearcats oh, jumped no. but got back. White back to throw from the pocket. In trouble again. Sacked again. Wilson Huber got there first. White spun away but then went down. So Wilson should get credit for the sack. Yes, he will. I believe so. Nine-yard loss on the sack for converted tight end Wilson Huber. Yep. Again, Memphis came in 50% on third downs. They're just a hair over 25% today. This has been one of the longest days of Brady White's college career. Helmet off, visibly frustrated on the Memphis sideline. Here comes the punt. Very low and short. It's going to bounce. Bounces sideways toward the Bearcat sideline and trickles out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. So the Cats will get the ball back, 5-12 on the clock. Ben Bryant was warming up yep. a few minutes ago. It looks like he will come on and finish up at quarterback. 42-10, Cincinnati. Got a break on the field with 5-12 to go. You're listening to Bearcat Football, presented by r &L Carriers on News Radio 700 WLW.
two, Memphis 10, 5-12 left on the clock. Desmond Ritter's day is done. What a day it was. He counted for four touchdowns last week, five today, three passes, two runs. He was 21 for 26. That's 81% for completion percentage. 271 yards, so that is more than 10 yards per attempt. Anything over eight is considered excellent. Again, three touchdowns. He did throw an interception Tony. on a deep ball intended for Jaden Thompson. Let's get on to Tony Pike. Dan, just to piggyback what you were talking about with the style of victories, when you look forward now at what's ahead for the Bearcats and trying to make a run at that four spot, this team feels different than years past of what you get from those teams trying to get in because it's a dominant defense. Look what they've done the last two weeks. They don't need to win by outscoring people. They don't need to win with gimmicks. You look at this team pregame, and they look like a big-time program from a physical standpoint. So this isn't a gimmicky bunch. This isn't relying on your offense to outscore other teams. This is a team that does it with balance. They do it on both sides. And this is going to be a very interesting conversation. You saw the national media pick up the Bearcats after the SMU win with another statement win today. The, uh, the, the tides are, are changing on how people view Cincinnati and their chances to crash that, uh, that top four party. Ben Bryant does take over at quarterback. Thank you, Tony. Cincinnati currently behind Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Georgia, and Oklahoma State in the AP poll. Yeah, not a lot of room there to climb up right now, but, you know, as we talked about earlier, running the table is, is an option. Clemson has come back to take a lead over Boston College. Here's a first down handoff. Not much there for Ryan Montgomery. Never did go down, but they blew the play dead after a one-yard game. It's Clemson 32, BC 28. Got about 11 minutes to go in South Carolina. Yeah, and, and the Bearcats, the way the schedules worked out with the Tulsa game being postponed, three road games to end the year is tough, but if there was ever a year when going on the road isn't maybe quite as tough when the crowds are limited um, or no crowd at all, depending on where you're playing. Um, you know, and, and, and I've said it a, a dozen times, Luke Fickle and his staff does a great job of getting this team ready to play. Second down and 10 as Bryant hands it off to Montgomery again. Jukes and jives and makes it out to the 38, a four yard pickup. And we'll see if they allow Ben Bryant to throw the ball here on a tough third and five to keep running. Will he throw the ball here and keep this drive alive? I don't think they want to score anymore, but at the same time, they'd love to keep this drive going. And Trey Tucker comes into the game, and that tells me something right there. Cincinnati's wide receivers include Delrone Donaldson, kind of emerged in training camp, hadn't even really heard of the guy, and he had an excellent camp. Third down and six. Ben Bryant will through. No, he runs a quarterback run to the left, lowers the shoulder, it. and picks up the first down. So Ben Bryant <laughs> wasn't going to go into a slide. No. He took on a defender. Shoulder first, drove Xavier Collins backward and picked up the six yards for the first down. Yep. And you laying on the ground there, looked over to the Memphis bench and said, Brady White, that's how you do this <laughs> when you need to get a first down. And you don't need to slide. Peyton Singletary checks in at tight end, so a bunch of reserves are in there right now for UC. Second stringers in on the offensive line out of a pistol formation. Ben Bryant catches the snap, turns left, hands it off to Jerome Ford, started left, now cuts it back, and finds running room to the Memphis 49 for an eight-yard gain. Yeah, nice job there, boys. Sets up a second and two. Excellent, excellent job by Ford of cutting back. And Got his third touchdown a little while ago. He's doing a nice job and figures to get uh, he and Ryan Montgomery the bulk of the carries the rest of the way. Seven carries, 67 yards, so nearly 10 yards a crack for Jerome Ford, helped by the 33-yard touchdown run. Cincinnati allowing the play clock to wind down inside of 10, looking to drain the remaining clock in this game. Down to about two and a half minutes to go. They hand it off to Jerome Ford again. He gets stacked up near the line and tackled one yard short of the first down. Yeah, not able to get it. They able to convert on this one, and they'll be able to just do what Dan Hort said at the end of the half. See them take the victory formation, 
in about an hour and a half. That's right. So we'll see. They got to pick up the first down first. My Nostradamus moment. Yes, sir. All of the offensive linemen on the field right now did not start this game. The tight end is the third guy on the depth chart right now with Bruno LaBelle out with an injury. That is the big converted quarterback, Cam Jones. On third and one, it's a run to the left for Jerome Ford. Lowers the boom like a battery ram and emerges from the pack. There he goes. Jerome Ford goes 48 yards for a touchdown when it looked like he was just going to pick up two or three to get a first down. Suddenly, it was like a cannonball was shot out of the cannon, and he took it the rest of the way for the score. Yeah, it was the intention. Just pick up a couple of yards, get that first down. And he, he went low, and boy, you could see just the way that his effort was taking him. He was going to pick up the first down, which the Bearcats could have run the clock out then. But he came out of there and took off for the end zone, puts him up over 100 yards on the day. 116 to be exact, and only nine carries. Two long fourth quarter touchdown runs for the Alabama transfer, Jerome Ford. Cole Smith's PAT is good. He is seven for seven today. It is a blowout at Nippert Stadium as the Bearcats lead the defending AAC champions, Memphis, 49 to 10. Yeah, it's all victory coming, but not like this. Man, great job by Ford. He got a great block in there by a couple of his off offensive linemen, and that allowed him to stay up. Jeremy Cooper, who's a guy that has been a starter quite a bit, but um, not in there today. And Ford just stayed upright and was able to keep churning and got free, got into the end zone. Ninety seconds left on the clock. Bearcats have more than 500 yards of offense today. But Memphis's defense has been allowing on average this year. <laughs> Playing walking in Memphis now. Makes me think of two weeks in my life I'll never get back last year. <laughs> the, the Mark Cohn version instead of the share version. This is a pooch kick that'll be fair caught. Fair catch made at the 15, but in college football, that puts the ball at the 25. That's where Memphis will have it with 130 left. Memphis, of course, plays that song a lot. Along with a Paul Simon song. You don't miss the back-to-back -back weekends at the Liberty Bowl. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Memphis is going to bring its backup quarterback into the game. Connor Adair, a junior from Alabama, checks in. He's thrown 17 passes off the bench this year in lopsided games. He'll hand it off on first down and uh, pinballing his way up the field for a gain of about five is Brandon Thomas, his first carry of the year. And yeah, getting a handful of reserves in there. Nice job by Brandon Thomas, getting some yardage there. 108 left, 49 to 10, Cincinnati, wow. Total domination. Yes. On second down and five, Adair hands it off. Thomas will be tackled after a short pickup. First guy to get to him was Deshaun Pace. Deshaun Pace out of Coleraine High School, true freshman linebacker. Memphis will have to snap it one more time. Timothy Taylor checks in at running back. He'll probably get the final carry of the game. 27 seconds left. Connor Adair ready. On third down and two. Hands it off to Thomas. Thomas trying to sprint wide right. And he is pulled down by Blake Basevich. Memphis will not try to run another play. They're heading to the sideline. Luke Fickle said it. before the game it would not be about revenge. It would be about redemption. And the Bearcats get that with a capital R today. They throttle the Memphis Tigers 49 to 10 as the seventh ranked Bearcats improved to 5 and 0 this season. What a performance by the undefeated Cincinnati Bearcats. 
Absolutely. Both sides of the football. You take away the 92-yard touchdown that they gave up. The, I think the, your description was, was good, Dan. It was almost like a fluke play because the way the Bearcat defense handled Memphis the rest of the day was phenomenal. The offense, great to see Desmond Ritter come out with those kind of throwing numbers, 231, 271 yards rather through the air. And, and, and as we've become accustomed to now in the last two weeks, Desmond Ritter involved in five touchdowns today after being involved in four last week, three touchdown passes today along with two running. Just an outstanding performance again by Des Ritter. And great balance again for the Cats, 271 through the air, 242 on the ground, including Jerome Ford's first 100-yard rushing performance at this level, and he did it on nine carries, nine carries for 116 yards. The Bearcats win it by 39 points. Final score, 49 to 10. Stay tuned for the postgame show coming up. You've been listening to Bearcat Football, presented by RL Carriers on the home of the Cats, News Radio 7.5.